um, Danelle and SAA. Um, of course, I'm due to report to colleagues on the ESCOM related matters from this morning. Uh, I can confirm that I have had a discussion uh, with Parliamentary Legal Services, our legal advisor, uh, who has given um, guidance, and I think it's very, it's very strategic and it's very correct and uh, uh, advice that we can rely on uh, to, to move forward. I will deal with that matter at the end uh, so that we do not muddy uh, the waters and draw the SIU now on matters which uh, they had not ordinarily been scheduled for. But we have received guidance from um, parliamentary legal services on how to proceed in implementing the resolutions uh, taken this morning. So I'd like to welcome you colleagues and welcome to Advocate in TV and uh, Head of Unit with the um, panel presentation, uh, and then we will go to the SAA. So without any further ado, okay. over to you. Uh, thank you, uh, Honorable Chairperson of SCOPA and Honorable Members of SCOPA. Uh, we do appreciate the opportunity to present uh, our investigation, uh, the status thereof into DINEL and uh, into SAA. Uh, I'm joined in the meeting by uh, Mrs. Tasibe. Uh, she is the lead investigator in both this investigation projects. Uh, but she's also the provincial head of the Eastern Cape SIU office. I'm also joined by Mr. Uh, Leonard Lecheto, uh, who's the chief national investigating officer overseeing these investigations. Uh, but I'm also joined by uh, Dr. Wells, who's the chief legal counsel. Uh, should there be any need for any legal uh, clarifications uh, relating to these investigations, he is there to, to assist. Uh, Chair, without further ado, uh, we're going to start off, as you indicate, with, uh, with Dinelle uh, investigation, uh, and then just request uh, uh, Mr. Lecheto, who would be flagging the presentation, to, to flag it, please. And then uh, Honorable Chair, Mrs. Kasibe is going to proceed with the, with the presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, over to you, Zodo. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Advocate Motibi. Good evening, uh, the Honorable Chair and Honorable Members. Uh, my name is Zodo Kasibe has already uh, 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 been introduced by the head. Uh, the first oh, presentation on the first presentation will be on Danel. Can you move the slide, Mr. Lecheto? Okay, my presentation outline, Chair, I will take you through the introduction and the mandate of the SIU, the focus areas, the objectives of the investigation, key deliverables of the investigation, preliminary findings, outstanding work and limitations and challenges. The reason we are so detailed in this, in, uh, in this presentation chair is because this is the first presentation that we are doing, uh, that we are presenting to, to SCOPA. Okay, next slide, sir. Uh, this investigation, uh, honorable chair members, uh, emanated from a complaint received by the SIU on or about October, 2018. Some of the allegations emanated from the 2018-2019 audit findings. These are AG findings. Therefore, we motivated for a proclamation and proclamation R32 of 2019 was published on the 5th of July, 2019, authorizing the SIU to investigate certain allegations against Denial. On the 8th of November, 2019, proclamation R57 was published extending the scope of investigation to include additional matters. The SIU is authorized to investigate serious mal malpractices or maladministration, which have taken place between uh, 1st January 2015 and the date of the pub publication of the proclamation, 
which is the 8th of November, 2019, or any matter that took, prior, that took place prior to 1st of January, 2015 or, 8, or after 8th of November, but which is connected or incidental ancillary to the matters mentioned in the schedule or involve the same persons or entities investigated other under the authority of this proclamation. Next slide, sir. Uh, the matters that are listed in the schedule to the proclamation of the SIU um, Honorable Chair, we are mandated to, to investigate the procurement of and uh, contracting for IT security assessment services by Donnell, the procurement uh, for services to develop a white paper, the procurement of or contracting for legal services, a specific firm uh, in, this, in this instance, uh, the procurement of or contracting for steel fabrication services and steel fabricated goods, the wording of bursaries by Donnell to three um, uh, uh, bursary holders for pilot licenses. And we are also uh, directed to investigate unlawful, irregular, or unapproved measures or practices in relation to the misappropriation of IP rights in Donnell's air to air missiles standoff weapons, surface target missiles, air defense, and unmanned aerial vehicle systems. Next slide, sir. The key objectives of this investigation, uh, we, uh, we intend to review uh, compliance with prescribed legislation in respect of the procurement process followed by DENA, collect lawfully admissible evidence with a view to facilitate the institution of criminal and or disciplinary proceedings against complicit parties, collect lawfully admissible evidence to approach the courts and set aside the contracts entered into between Danel and service providers or suppliers, identify and quantify losses incurred by Danel and to facilitate the recovery of the losses to provide recommendations on improvements to systemic weaknesses identified. Next slide. Before then, I start with, the, with my presentation chair. Um, uh, we felt that it was necessary to start with the 2015 board appointments. During 2015 chair, the former minister of the Department of Public Enterprises appointed a new board of directors replacing the previous board. However, the appointment deviated from the normal processes that is followed when appointing board members for SOEs, including Daniel. This process is actually followed through the, 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 the department's um, um, legal compliance unit. The list of what seemed to be proposed new Daniel board members was submitted by a certain Gupta associate to the minister's office. The proposed names differed from the list already submitted through the normal governance process, and it was the same list of names that was later presented to cabinet for approval. The, the cabinet approved the proposed list with the exception of two names on the, on, on, on the list that was proposed by the Gupta associate. So the new board uh, immediately started on the 25th of July and made a number of changes, including the removal of the chief uh, executive officer, the group chief executive officer, Mr. Saloji at the time, and the former group chief financial officer, which was Mr. Figilem Hong. Next slide. Uh, I will then refer to the, the appointment of the board when I talk to the slides that will follow. Now I move to the first allegation, the appointment of Telspace system. It was alleged that Denel did not follow any formal procurement or competitive bidding process prior to the conclusion of Telspace, Telspace contract. No purchase order was issued as required by Daniel's SCM policy and no request for any deviation was submitted and, they are uh, and, they are uh, and approved by the, the SCM, uh, uh, the, the group SC uh, executive uh, in, within Daniel. 
It was also um, uh, alleged that whilst the name is a key, uh, is a national key point, they failed to involve the South African State Security Agency in the appointment of Telspaid for security assessment. This was a, 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 a red, um, uh, this, this contract was actually um, a, a, a very serious contract in the sense that they were going to test the vulnerability of the IT systems within Danel to, um, to uh, outside hacking and all of that. So for them to be able to do this, they had to hack the system. So um, at this uh, point, we felt that maybe SA, SSA should have been involved. And um, move, move to the next slide. Okay. So this type of, 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 of assessment is called the red team penetration testing. So it tests the vulnerability of the NEL, the IT, the entire IT system to, um, uh, to, to outside uh, world and to, uh, to, um, to any corrupt elements. So in this regard, our findings are the process to appoint Telspace was actually irregular in the sense that the, there was no tender advert no procurement process followed whatsoever. It was a gentleman's agreement. Um, there was an, a, a middleman, a certain gentleman who acted as a, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a nodal point between Danelle and Telspace. Um, as a result of an engagement letter that was entered into between this company and, and, and Danelle, Danelle made a 70% advance payment of 4.6 million. Um, uh, before anything could be done. This was done just on the presentation of a, uh, a report uh, that would indicate that, you know, they've done the work. No report, but just a presentation. So SA, SSA was not involved in this process and the company was not vetted at all. The report is still outstanding. However, Telspace just presented uh, the identified security threats to Danelle. So after then that presentation, they started demanding the 30% that was outstanding. And, and then when Danelle demanded some reports, then they, they lodged um, as, as a civil claim against Danelle and that civil claim is pending uh, in court. What we've then done, uh, we interviewed uh, the both parties uh, in trying to understand what really went down in this contract. And according to Telspace, they were uh, trying to engage Danel through the, the, the middlemen, but they were not getting any joy. They do have the report that, that they presented and they are still sitting with that critical evidence um, that they wanted to, to, to present to Danelle. So they were willing to hand over everything. And uh, through our intervention, they were also willing to, to, to circle and, 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 and um, walk away from the civil claim. Uh, we advised Danelle, we are actually advising them to, to, um, to circle with this, with this company for the 1.9 million because they don't even have monies to pay the, 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 the legal um, the, uh, the experts to fight the case on their behalf. So at this point, we are looking at this civil recovery that will arise from uh, this settlement, uh, that the 1.9 million that will arise from this uh, settlement. We are also looking at the criminal referral. At this point in time, we have evidence against the former uh, group CEO uh, on, on PFMA contravention. And we are looking at um, uh, gathering more evidence against all related parties. All employees that were implicated in this, in this um, uh, investigation, they left the employee of Danel, and we are currently pursuing criminal and uh, civil recovery in terms of all the monies that were paid to this company for, for this, uh, for this uh, contract. Next slide, sir. 
The next focus area is the appointment of Tulevex. This is the company that was appointed to develop a white paper. Canel at the time needed to unlock certain funding and, um, and they had to do this to um, a white paper, a company that was going to uh, suggest a means to, to get funding. And then it was alleged that no formal process, procurement processes were followed by Denel prior to the conclusion of this contract. And um, next slide, sir. We investigated the matter. And um, this company was appointed to develop a white paper. And this process followed an approval of a deviation from the normal procurement process. So we, in, 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 in essence, you know, there were no irregularities um, uncovered in terms of this appointment. During 2017, Denel experienced severe cash flow problems. And in order to pay salaries, they approached AMSCO to relax some of the risk of non-compliance guarantees to free up some credit banking facilities. There was, the, there was an urgent need then for Denel to develop a white paper for a funding model. They sought an approval for a deviation from SCM processes, and this was approved by the supply chain executive. Um, and then the approval was granted on the 13th of September 20, 2017. And then from this process, three quotations from uh, three companies, Ngidi, uh, Business Advisory, Tulevex, LTD, and TLKM Consulting were requested. Tulevex was appointed based on, the, on price and no regularities were, no irregularities were found. In essence, uh, in this matter, Denel actually negotiated the, the, the cost because they were supposed to pay 6.5 million and then uh, uh, excluding VET, and then they ended up paying 5.7 um, uh, inclusive of VET. So in this regard, there are, there are no uh, possible civil recoveries, no possible criminal referrals, and no disciplinaries in this instance. Can we move to the next one? Um, Chairperson, um, now I will go back to the appointment of the Denel board. There was a gentleman who was appointed during this period to be um, the chair of the board of Denel. And uh, this gentleman, uh, in his nomination form, the person who nominated him was the uh, a, a gentleman who owned a firm of attorneys called Kampa Attenis. So I'm linking that to, to this, um, the, 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 this investigation now. So the allegations in this regard, it is alleged that the former chairperson of, Den of the Denel board during 2016 and on a number of occasions thereafter appointed Kampa Attenis Incorporated, a firm of attorneys to render legal professional services to Denel without following proper procurement processes. This firm was not listed on Denel's database of service providers and in addition, this firm was also not part of the existing uh, panel of legal experts um, within Denel. So it is further alleged that some of the instructions were solely advancing the former chairperson's personal interest, as well as that of the Gupta family in the legal defense of one entity, um, of one entity, Fireblade, which owns a private passenger terminal at the Owartambo International Airport in Johannesburg. These were, uh, these were uh, the allegations that were received to person. Um, I think from just, just the first and foremost, we identified conflict of interest um, because it is clear that the chairperson of the former board of, of, of Danel at the time and the owner of this company they were related, they were either friends because he was the person who nominated um, the chairperson to the position and then, then he ended up benefiting from that, from, from, from his appointment. So uh, our findings are that this process of, of, of procuring the services from this company were irregular. There was no tender process whatsoever 
this company was just called to come and, and render services and it was not on the panel of experts from a panel of legal experts within Daniel. In addition to that, there was no contractual agreement signed between Daniel and this company. The fees were negotiated outside the normal SCM process. Then the group CEO and the chairperson managed and directed the project at the time. So instructions would directly come from these people. And uh, we also identified one other member who issued instructions to this firm, being the former CFO of Denel at the time, the group CFO of Denel um, at the time. Then Denel's legal department was not involved. They were only involved now in the administering of invoices received, but the person who would then um, confirm that the work has been done will be the group CEO. No records or instruction files are kept by camper attorneys. Um, they indicated that they, uh, they returned everything to Daniel, but there is no record, you know, the acknowledgement of receipt. And, uh, you know, from a reasonable point, of, from a reasonable person, you would expect that a legal firm will do that as a minimum uh, control measure. So the possible outcomes in this matter is we are referring the account of um, the 10 million rent to the Legal Practice Council for taxation. We are looking at possible criminal referral um, from the GCEO of, for, 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 of the former GCEO. In all these criminal referrals and, 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 and the disciplinaries, we are aiming to finalize everything by end of March which is the end of March this year. Uh, we are referring the CAMPA attorneys to the Legal Practice Council because, uh, because of then the, their conduct. And we're also looking at an administrative action thereafter from the, from the Legal Practice Council. We are also looking at uh, uh, other criminal referrals, especially with regards to the relationship uh, between the, the chairperson and the, the, the firm, as well as then the instructions that were issued by the, the, the former CFO. Next slide. Uh, now I move to the appointment of VR Laser Services. VR Laser is one of the Gupta companies um, that was involved in the in 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 in, in Daniel at the time. VR Laser is a company that specializes in steel fabrication and, 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 and also steel fabricated structures and hulls. The allegations uh, that we received was that they, they now commissioned um, the Ngiti Business Advisory to review the process that was followed by Daniel in the conclusion of a memorandum of agreement um, that was entered into between itself, being Daniel and VR Laser. Um, on 19 May 2015. Then according to this report, VR Laser was appointed as a single source supplier to the Netherlands system for all uh, fabricated steel services and goods such as fabricated structures and house. The process was found to be fraught with irregularities and accordingly the spending press went there to constituted irregular expenditure. It was further alleged that some of the executives at the Nell were conflicted. Next slide, sir. I would be uh, uh, talking about these people because um, this is also public knowledge. It, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this information has been shared and, and, and uh, there were people who testified and given this information at the Zondo Commission. Around February 2013, during an exhibition uh, that was uh, 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 led by Daniel at Abu Dhabi. The former, the former business development executive, Mr. Zelakenjeb, introduced Mr. Salim Issa to the one of the shareholders of Fiar Laser at the time, Mr. Chiang. The main purpose was the sale of Fiar Laser shares to Mr. Issa and his associates. The sale of the major shares of this property, uh, sorry, and the property of Yar Laser was uh, were transferred to Igasolve. 
Ecasoft is a company that is solely owned by Mr. Issa and was concluded in December 2013. And therefore, Mr. Issa became the major shareholder of VRLS. VR Laser and Denel had a relationship prior to the, the, the takeover of the major, major shares by, uh, by Mr. Issa. And in terms of then this business, develop, this business relationship, the contracts that were awarded to VR Laser, they were in the region between three and 13 million rand. So they never exceeded uh, 13 million per annum. However, after the sale, the value of contracts awarded to VR Laser exponentially increased from 39 million in 2014 to an average of 75 million every year thereafter. Chairperson, allow me to pause at this stage and then refer back to the appointment of the board. The board was appointed and the chairperson of the board immediately removed the former group CEO and the former group CFO and replaced the former Jeep Group CEO by Mr. Zola Kenjepe. And then, uh, and then therefore Mr. Njepe had always had this relationship with, this, uh, with Mr. Salim Issa stemming from 2013. Let's move, let's move to the next slide. We, 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 we projected this, ta this, ta the, this uh, table um, and this graph just to depict the picture uh, between 2009 and 2013, where VR Laser was still owned by the previous owners. And then, then from 2014 upwards to up to 2017, when the issue of the Gupta um, companies became public knowledge um, and all the contracts were canceled then uh, you can see for yourself that the graph then moved from that 13 million to the average of 75 million rand. Next slide, please. Our preliminary findings. Um, the, the Gupta company, Mr. Salim Issa, was very um, uh, instrumental in, 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 in persuading the, the company and, and, and its executive in getting most of the contracts to his company. During November 2014, the former Danel Group CEO, before Mr. Njepe, appointed the VR laser for the manufacturing of different variants of hoof yester vehicles. This was an order that was uh, 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 made to Daniel by AMSCO. This was despite the strategic requisition of LMT, a company now that was owned by Daniel for specific manufacturing of these hoof hasters. LMT specialized in hoof hasters, but for some reason, uh, VR Laser was then preferred to be the company to manufacture these vehicles. Um, uh, and uh, LMT was ignored. Over and above this, in late 2014 and early 2015, two memorandum of agreements were concluded, appointing VR Laser as a single source supplier for DLS, this is Denel Land Systems and Denel Vehicle Systems for steel fabrication and steel fabricated goods for a period of 10 years. This process was irregular. This was done by the group CEO at the time um, to authorizing the, the CEOs of DLS and DVS to sign a memorandum of agreements with the company named um, uh, uh, VR Leeson. These two MOAs were approved by the then acting GCEO, even though the group supply chain executive had declined the recommendation of this, of the DLS Exco to appoint VR Laser. 
All processes to appoint VR laser were irregular. None of them followed the proper procurement processes. We identified that orders were split in order to meet uh, the requirement, the SCM requirements, so that some of these approvals, they only uh, end up with the group executive. They don't go to the corporate center. We also identified conflict of interest between some executives and the directors of VR Laser. VR Laser is currently under business rescue. Uh, I've got that, I've got under civil recovery none, not because we are not pursuing anything at the moment. Our legals are currently busy um, uh, formulating a legal strategy to recover some of the funds that were paid to VR Laser. And, um, and, and, and we are just waiting for that process at the moment. We are compiling criminal referrals against a number of people, including the former GCEO and the CEO of Denel Dynamics. Um, uh, 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 sorry, the yeah, CEO of Lend, uh, uh, Lend Systems, as well as that of D DVS. The evidence of corruption is also under review. None of those implicated uh, members in the process are still in the employ of, of, of Danelle. However, we are seeking means of recovering uh, uh, some money from them and also looking at possible criminal referrals. Next slide, sir. Now we move to the awarding of bursaries by Danelle. The allegation was that certain officials breached the NEL study scheme benefits policy uh, or duty of care and or duty to always act in the best interest of the NEL in that during 2017, they played a role in the irregular awarding of bursaries to three individuals for their studies at a certain S school uh, for sum of um, 800,793 and 1.1 million. Next slide, sir. I will then break, break these uh, bursaries into individual beneficiaries. The first one was the award, awarding of bursaries by Danelle to Mr. Orabile Mahumapelo. Um, the bursary was awarded to Mr. Mahumapelo for his jet pilot program, and he signed a bursary agreement with Danelle on the 1st of February, 2017 for 1.1 million. This is in breach of the study, uh, scheme, uh, study scheme benefits policy. The NEL study, uh, uh, study scheme benefits policy is only limited to 100,000 uh, per student and it is part of a community outreach program. So, Mr. Mahumapelo was issued with a termination letter in June 2018 after his exclusion from the 43S school, the pilot uh, uh, school that is um, uh, 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 located in the Eastern Cape, and therefore he failed to adhere to the bursary con uh, conditions. The bursary agreement chairperson was drafted by Daniel. However, there were some missing paragraphs in the, in the agreement. But those missing paragraphs, they did not exonerate the bursary holders from uh, adhering to the bursary conditions. So at the time of his uh, exclusion from the S school, Daniel had already paid 881,000 rand. And out of this amount, 559,000, had already been credited to his study program. There was a balance of 321 in his uh, account. And, um, and therefore, the balance was therefore credited to another bursary holder by the name of Mr. Sanel and Lofu, without the approval from Denel. So we are currently pursuing uh, the process of uh, recovering this amount from 43 S school. In terms of um, uh, outcomes in this regard, an AOD um, to, the, uh, to the QNO 559 had already been signed by Mrs. Mahumapelo through her legal, through her legal representative. 
then we are looking at possible recovering um, 321 from the air school. There are no criminal referrals that we will be referring at the moment because there is already a criminal case that is um, that is uh, with uh, the, 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 I think it was registered at Centurion. So we, what we've been doing, we've been sharing notes with the, the investigator, um, uh, which is Superintendent Kumal. The disciplinary referral, all officials that were implicated have left the employee of Tenel. However, there is already a case, a civil claim that has been lodged by Tenel against those individuals in respect of all the bursaries that were awarded um, uh, uh, unlawfully to these students. The next slide. Then the bursary that was awarded to Mr. Damane. This is uh, Sibulela Damane. This lady was already at the air school, but the difference between her contract and that of Mr. Mahumapelo is that her contract and the other bursary holder their contracts were only signed in May. And this was after the media made noise about Mr. Mahuma Pelo's um, bursary. So um, this was awarded to Mr. Uh, Mr. Mane for integrated commercial pilot license. And therefore she signed her bursary agreement with Denel for an amount of 793. Whilst she was already a student at 43 A school. This was in breach, again, of the NL study scheme benefits policy. Mr. Mane was also issued with a termination letter on 2nd November 2017, after her exclusion from a school and therefore failed to adhere to passary conditions. Danel had already paid 641,000 rent, and out of this amount, 234 had been credited to her study program. The balance of her amount that, that was paid by Danel was therefore credited to Mr. Sanel and Rovo's account without any approval from Danel. The SIU is in the process of recovering this amount from the 43S school. What 43S school did, they wrote an email to, um, to Danel and they indicated that we are going to be taking some money from this account to that. Uh, please respond by this date. If you don't, we will consider your silence to mean yes. So that is not how contracts are, are managed, especially in, in this regard. So what we have done in this regard, we have served Mr. Mrs. Damane with a letter of demand and uh, she didn't respond and we are now currently pursuing um, uh, further, uh, we are preparing summons to recover the 234 from her. And the, then we are going to um, uh, look at recovering the 407,000 uh, from the S school. As already indicated, there's a criminal um, uh, uh, referral that's in uh, uh, Centurion, that's in criminal case that's already been investigated there. So we are just sharing um, notes with the police in this regard. Then the officials are already, um, uh, they already left the Danel and we are again, similar to the first one. Um, we will uh, monitor the civil claim against those officials by Danel. Next slide. Um, unlike the two uh, other Basari holders, Mr. Stanel and Lofu was successful in his uh, studies. Um, he also was awarded a Basari uh, for an integrated commercial pilot license, and he signed a Basari agreement on 15 May 2017 for 801. This was also in breach of the NEL study scheme benefits policy. However, Mr. Ndovu, as already alluded, completed his course. Danel only paid 510,000 towards his study program and the entire amount was credited to his study program because he was successful. The balance of the contract amount was taken from the credits of other bursary holders. Um, and then what ESFUL did, took money from uh, Mr. Mahumapelo and Mr. Mane, and thus credited um, that the entire amount to Mr. Ndrov. There was an overpayment of 182,000 rent, 
and this was outside the contractual agreement with Denel. We are looking at, um, at, at recovering the 182,000 rent from the ESCO. Criminal referrals, same as, as already reported, and also then there's, there's a civil claim against them, the, 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 the officials of Denel who were involved in this matter. That concludes the passeries. Let's move. Now we move to the misappropriation of IP. The allegations are that IP belonging to the institution, being Denel, was misappropriated in a cohesive criminal conduct to abate foreign state companies. This involves state companies um, uh, 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 like Saudi, the Saudi Arabia military industries, the SEMI, and the second company is Parigi Dynamics, um, which is a state owned company in the United Arab Emirates. Um, then this Parigi Dynamics had a joint venture with Denel. Next slide. I will then uh, deal with SEMI and then deal with Parigi Dynamics. Our investigation with regards to SEMI, uh, our findings confirm that certain data packs that belongs to Denel Dynamics were unlawfully downloaded from Denel server to other devices. These data packs are for Mkondo, Ingwe, Magoba, Mesos. The SEMI group, this whole, start, this whole um, uh, deal started by um, semi showing interest in certain missiles in South Africa, and they forwarded a business proposal to Denel, and, and they listed then the missiles that they were interested in, which is Mkondo, Inga, and, Mag and, Mag and Magopa. Then subsequent to that business proposal, a meeting was arranged between Denel and Sami, and it took place on the 19th of February. The same meeting um, then was aborted because the SEMI group uh, refused to sign a non-disclosure agreement, which was a condition for any kind of uh, business and information sharing for DNA. So because they refused to sign the NDA, then the meeting could not take place, could not continue. So that was the end of the formal um, dealings between DNA and SEMI, however, Subsequent to this meeting, an, a, an NDA uh, that was signed by one Denel member who was not even authorized to sign on behalf of the company, then um, it was then start, it started uh, uh, circulating. And then as a result of that NDA information then was shared to the SAMI. Uh, at a later stage, uh, the CEO of Denel Dynamics then um, announced his resignation uh, because he had uh, been offered an, an opportunity of a lifetime. After doing this, an instruction was then given to junior members to download certain information. So, and then the information was downloaded. Um, we'll just give high level information for the sake of, 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 of confidentiality in this. Then the three former officials, including then the CEO of Daniel Dynamics, resigned and joined the SAMI. Um, they were all implicated in the process. At this stage, we have uh, got none under civil recovery. This is simple because there's a, there's a project that we are currently embarking on. Um, it's our office, the NPA. Uh, the Hawks as well as FIC, where we are trying to retrieve all the information from the foreign companies and, and foreign institutions. So in terms of criminal referrals, there are five criminal referrals uh, that uh, are possible in this instance. And, uh, um, and we intend to invoke extradition treaties and, uh, and agreements to extradite the persons to face charges in the Republic. We at the moment are looking at one disciplinary referral because there's only one member who's currently at Denel um, at, at the moment. Um, yeah, now let me let me let me pause there. Let's move to the next one, the Barigi. Barigi Dynamics. Uh, it's 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 a company that's in joint venture with Denel. Denel is owning 49% of the shares. And, 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 and Barigi Dynamics owns 51% in the joint venture. 
However, this company, Parigi, they later accorded their status to another company styled Helcon. And uh, this was then um, done with the approval of the board of Parigi. Janelle has always been um, uh, part of the Parigi board. They were represented in that because of their shareholding. And what we have here is the P2 and P3 IP that are subject of the investigation. Um, and this IP, our findings are that it was unlawfully transferred to Halcon, which is a company that succeeded Parigi in the JV. This was done under the disguise of a letter signed by the former member of Denel Dynamics, who was involved in the stealing of data packs for the summit. Another official at Denel signed of the board meetings of Parigi Dynamics uh, board that authorizing the transfer of the P2 and P3 missiles to Parigi. This member did this without the, authority, uh, the authorization from the board as well as then the executives of Dene. We are looking at possible criminal referrals and uh, similar to the one that we've re reported um, uh, 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 the Supra, as well as one disciplinary against an, an official who's still at Danel at the moment. Um, in terms of civil recovery, we are still working with FIC and all other institutions because we, um, we felt that there was a need uh, for a multidisciplinary approach in this because we, this is uh, a serious crime against the state. Can we move forward? I've already alluded to the, the involvement of this institution. Um, uh, um, we, can, we can move. We, we already have this multidisciplinary approach. Uh, Chaperson, uh, I've got the Denel income statement here. And the, the purpose of this is just to indicate um, uh, the, 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 the financial performance of Denel from 2015 to 2020. Uh, this is by no means part of our investigation, but it's, you know, in terms of our mandate, we also have a, a, a responsibility to look at maladministration. So we, we are trying to connect and find the reasons for the, 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 the collapse of this institution. And in, this, in that regard, we are looking at the causes of this, um, the, the, the collapse of Kenel. Uh, from 2015, Chairperson, there were a number of investors who, after the appointment of the new board, decided to pull out from Kenel. And this actually required Danel to cough out in excess of 1.2 billion rand to pay these, um, these investors because they wanted nothing to do with Danel. Danel has been issuing a commercial paper to investors and, and from that date, um, there was no interest in Danel. And also in addition to this, there was a Denel Asia transaction, which is not part of our investigation, which also contributed to the, to the demise of Denel. And um, we are still investigating all of those causes. And we are in discussion with the minister and, and, and the department in this regard, whether to extend our scope to include some of those, um, some of those institutions. But if you, okay, can we go down? But if you look at the performance of, 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 of Denel, um, it has declined from that year, making minimum profits now to uh, making huge losses. So um, uh, the losses are just increasing every year. And there is, um, uh, you know, at the moment, uh, there's no uh, indication of any improvement unless therefore there's some kind of intervention if you're looking at it at first fail. Let's go down. This is the financial position. Uh, Danelle had assets uh, that were really, you know, the, their financial position was good, but at the moment, the, 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 the state is very bad um, uh, and it, 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 it 
tells a story that um, the, 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 depart, the institution is technically insolvent, that that's if you're looking at it at face value without considering other factors. I'm, I'm looking at this uh, and I'm saying this from an investor, an investor point of view, that if you look at this, um, uh, 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 the balance sheet and the financial, yeah, the financial position, um, it, it tells a story about Tenel. These are things that we are currently looking at because as part of our maladministration processes and we are going to pronounce in the near future if we are extending our proclamation. Next slide and next slide. Can we move to the next? Then the outstanding activities, Chaperson, whilst uh, most of the NELS executive and employees have left the employ, the SIU is obtaining and reviewing evidence to assess whether there are legal basis to consider criminal and civil proceeding to cover, to recover losses suffered by Denel during the period. Next slide. Chaperson, um, as you would know, we had some limitations, especially last year, uh, due to uh, the, the restrictions that were imposed by the lockdown and also the non-availability of personnel. All departments were working on skeleton staff and therefore it was, it was almost impossible at times to uh, arrange certain meetings and, and, and also get documents at, a, you know, at, you know, with the speed that we required to, to, to get those documents. And also we have an, an, a challenge uh, because th there are no documents. This is because um, the, then there's a high staff turnover at Denel. Um, members have left and unfortunately most of them left unceremoniously. There was no handover, and this is based, um, I think it's, it's more related to the current financial crisis that is uh, that Daniel is, is experiencing. Next slide. That concludes uh, my presentation, Chair Daniel. Thank you so much. Oh. Hey. Yeah, ne. All right. Uh, right, <clears throat> colleagues. Um, it, is there, are there any questions for clarity on that uh, update by uh, Sayu on the now related matters? Uh, Honorable Chair. Ba. Uh, just a few points to pick up on uh, before the okay, honorable sure, members. Fine. Yes, um, so there's really just few because my colleague covered effectively all the points uh, that, that, that we needed to cover. Just the last few slides where we indicating the, just the financial position relating to either liquidity uh, uh, issues around denial and just the sustainability of Dinel. Uh, as my colleague indicated, uh, we, we from time to time now need to really pick up and opine or even pronounce ourselves on the extent of the maladministration or the, or, or the malpractice. And having observed that, and we will document it appropriately uh, so, that, so that we are able to also you know, when next time we present, we should say, you know, this is this is the ultimate uh, determination of what our view is, what really NEF led uh, to Dinel uh, going going under, so to speak, uh, uh, because there is, as, as we note in those slides, that uh, you know, there's a serious serious requirement for an intervention. Uh, if that doesn't happen, it is our view that uh, the sustainability of Dinel is at risk. But we will still document you know, our observation around all those causes that, uh, that led to serious mal maladministration and malpractice. In terms of the intellectual property, that is, uh, I mean, all of these findings are serious, uh, honorable chair and honorable members. Uh, <clears throat> the, 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 the intellectual property uh, it's, it's actually more so serious because um, now 
uh, uh, the, the, it, it almost you know, threatens the security because now here we're sitting with the intellectual property uh, which is now in the hands of, uh, of a foreign company uh, simply because you know, of the fraud or corruption that happened uh, at the time. So we are going to quantify the, the value uh, attached to this intellectual property so that when we go into civil litigation process, we are able to say what is it that we are really seeking to claim while the criminal process takes its course. And it is our view that we need to immediately invoke the mutual legal assistant so that uh, these people who went now uh, uh, outside of the country, we can start the process to, to extradite them to come and stand trial here in South Africa. Thank you. Thank you, honorable chair and honorable members, I appreciate it. Um, no, thank you very much, uh, HOU, <clears throat> um, for that. Um, I'm reminded of uh, what Marcellus says in Hamlet, something is rotten in the state of Denmark. I just feel that that is applicable here, really. Um, all is not well in the state of Denel. It's just, um, yeah. All right. Honorable Van Minion will be first off the bat, and then Honorable Tulashe, and then uh, Honorable uh, Swartz. In that order, please. Thank you very much, Chair. I've, I've got a couple of questions here. I mean, firstly, I think that it's very obvious that there are a number of people and organizations that have essentially just looted Denial for their own interests. Um, and that is part of the problem. If I look at a lot of these investigations, uh, tell space, come to attorneys, et cetera, et cetera, all sorts of them, you know, what happens is they come along, there is, is some sort of agreement, certainly not a gentleman's agreement because it's simply a corrupt agreement. Then when the SIU has investigated, the officials have left, um, they can't get hold of them, they're no longer there, the money has been dissipated, and essentially people walk away with a large amount of, of money and funding from Denel, but there's no follow-up, nothing other than potentially criminal proceedings happen. So it's, it's actually a very nice cash cow to have these agreements, then leave the organization and walk away with a, a self-imposed golden handshake, so to speak. Um, what I want to know is the slide on the board appointments wasn't very clear. If we could just go through that again. Unfortunately, I didn't receive the documents prior to this. So I, I wasn't entirely sure what was being referred to. If we could just go through that, I think it was the second or the third slide, quite clearly. Um, then on the Telspace matter, what is the time period that the SIU has followed in terms of the investigation? Because as I've expressed so many times before, what concerns me is people walk away with money, they resign, the money is dissipated, and then potentially there's a settlement. And if there is now a conversation about a settlement of 1.9 million, it means that the perpetrators have walked away with 4.7 million. And I always worry these settlements potentially have an impact on criminal investigations. So please like some reassurance on that. And then with Kumpur attorneys, what I'm concerned about is if Denal has now referred this for a taxation, they also admit they didn't give the instruction. The instruction was given by the previous group director regarding personal matters. Uh, but surely in allowing a taxation to go ahead, it would be a tacit exception, you know, um, acceptance of that instruction. So please just clarify that. Also, I mean, in, in terms of legal firms, they do have to retain documents for five years. So I'm interested in why that hasn't happened. Um, and then with the other matters, I mean, it's, as I said before, it, it's just this looting that seems to happen with absolutely no comeback because everybody leaves. Thank you very much. All right. Um, thank you very much, Honorable. I, mean, I wouldn't say it's a gentleman's agreement. It was a looter's agreement. Um, just to safeguard the real gentlemen that are out there would not do this kind of thing. Uh, to Honorable Tulasha. 
Thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson and everybody in the meeting. Good evening. Chair, once again, let's welcome the extensive report that has been tabled by SIU. For me, everything is clear on their findings as well as what they are going to implement going forward. However, Chair, I, under the, the tail space, I heard that everybody is being charged and there's a process that is being followed. But I don't hear anything about the chairperson of the board. Is he being or is the person being deliberately ignored, although he was presiding over all this and even involved in the situation where he was not supposed to? I was, I was trying to check in the whole report, especially the tell space. I don't hear anything that speaks against the the chairperson or something that says what why is he not uh, charged is there any difficulty to make him to account like everybody else as he was the chairperson of the, of the time and he presided over everything else to an extent of negotiating like he was the champion of Lutas chair he championed the looting in denial the report is very clear all i want to know is this about the chairperson in particular Thanks, Chair. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Honorable Swartz. Um, Honorable, Sw Honorable Swartz, right. Uh, thank you, Chair, and good evening to everyone. Chair, my is just that um, the most companies involved in corruption at Danel are under business rescue. Is the ICU pursuing civil matters against directors of such companies? And then two, it is also concerning that there are middlemen involved in state procurement, such as in the telespace contract. How many contracts involved middlemen? And how much was paid to the middleman for the telespace um, contract? Thank you, Chair. Okay, thanks, Honorable Sat. In fact, Madam Dolasha reminds me when she speaks about the chairperson. If I'm not mistaken, the chairperson of the board of Danel has resigned um, last week. So I think we'll have to follow that up. Um, yeah, so I'm to Lasha, thanks for that, bringing that up because there is a report to, 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 to that uh, effect. All right, Honorable Hart Debe. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. I just finally got home. Um, I've been in the shuttle all along, uh, but I, I managed to capture the essence um, and some of the issues as highlighted uh, uh, in this presentation. Chair, you correct me if I'm wrong, uh, because like I said, I've been uh, in the shuttle. So the report suggests that the board in the first place was appointed irregular. Is that the case, Chair? Chairperson? Yes, that is the case. That, that is the case. That is the yes. case. Oh, oh, all right, then. Okay, I'm raising this on the basis that uh, the report further suggests that the investors disinvest immediately after the regular elected board was appointed. Now, meaning the root cause of all the challenges associated with Denel started when the board was appointed irregular. Now, when we need, we, we don't want a panado or a grandpa approach when you have a headache, you're only given a grandpa. You don't address why you're sick. Perhaps you're not eating properly, so you need to change your diet so that from time to time you don't get a headache. From where I'm sick, it means that the person that also needs to be held accountable, it's the one who appointed the board irregularly because had he not done such, 
all these challenges and all these investigations wouldn't have taken place. I want to, from the investigators, whether or not they have pursued or they've made findings uh, uh, from the root cause of all these challenges, because you correctly pointed out that uh, investors started disinvesting immediately after the appointment of this board, which was irregular in, 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 in its nature. And everything else that followed uh, uh, speaks uh, a volume in terms of uh, the corruption. This report, Chair, eh, it's depressing to say the least. I don't know why you chose uh, a late evening to give us depressing news uh, uh, while we are tired from the sitting of Parliament. But in all fairness, Chair, I don't think uh, the root cause and the person who initiated all this uh, 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 drastic disregard of the law should be uh, uh, left scot-free. So I would like to get an understanding in terms of the scope and the mandate of the SIU, whether or not it extends to the source of origin so that we are clear in terms of where should we move in terms of pursuing uh, those that uh, started this whole uh, quagmire. Thank you, Chair. But, um, well, I'm not the bearer of bad news. <clears throat> it's uh, <laughs> it's the SIU, <laughs> not the one left. So, the, uh, it's no, on the head of your saying, head. <laughs> Chief, this one is on you. I'm not <laughs> taking responsibility. <laughs> All right, let's receive responses from the SIU, and then we'll move on to the presentation on SA. Uh, Honorable Chair, I'll take some of the questions. Uh, and, and I'll just ask my colleague, Mr. Siva, just to prepare to take some of those that uh, require uh, a response in terms from, from the actual investigation. <laughs> Honorable Chair, let me start off with, uh, with uh, the question by Honorable uh, Hadebe. Uh, we, I agree that the findings of the investigation do point that uh, you know, from the onset, and that is why we started in the investigation as a background uh, with the appointment of this board and the process it followed and the manner in which it was almost, call it predetermined or determined, uh, and didn't follow you know, the, the, the normal process. So, so we have said that, that we will do in all other investigations, when we're saying we need to ensure that we hold everyone accountable at all levels, uh, from the officials, executives, accounting authority, executive authority. So in this regard, uh, Chair, I'm sure you, the, the, the honorable committee may probably also uh, I want to know that the investigation is ongoing and we are anticipating that we'll conclude it by the end of June. During that period, uh, Honorable Hadeve, the investigation would have to pursue and determine the responsibility uh, of, as uh, Honorable Tulasha says, of the chairperson of the board and the board uh, as a whole as the accounting authority, uh, and of course the executive authority that, that uh, appointed the board without following the, the process. So we can assure the committee that uh, uh, the investigating team uh, will, will, will definitely look at that. Uh, in terms of the, the questions by Honorable Swartz, it was indeed our concern as well that, uh, you know, it really looks like companies that are experiencing problems or even facing investigations, and we have seen it in other areas like ESCOM and so on, where companies, I want to say, just easily resort to this business rescue uh, legal provision in the Companies Act. 
So, so for us and our legal, uh, our, our chief legal counsel is in the room. If there's a need to unpack it more, he can do that. So we are not going to accept, like we, we have not, as an example, we have not accepted the business rescue uh, uh, submission uh, in, in one of the companies at ESCOM. We'll do the same here, honorable chair and honorable members, just simply to show that we can go behind the, the reasons of, ensure, of saying we are now under business rescue as though it's almost like creating a wall now for anybody not to you know, uh, dive deep into the reasons uh, why you're going into business rescue so that you can be hold, held accountable. So we will do that. There's legal process that we will get uh, underway through our legal team. The question of uh, how much was paid to the middleman, uh, Mr. Siva, perhaps if you can uh, allude to that, uh, please make a note of it. Uh, Honorable Tulasha, what about the chairperson? Yes, uh, the chairperson, the board as a whole, we will determine their responsibility and accountability when all of this were, were happening. If there were various boards in various time periods, we will make sure that we determine that appropriately. Um, Honorable Van Minen, uh, Again, I really agree and, and, and echo the same sentiment. In all of the investigations that we are doing, we're really experiencing this phenomenon. The phenomenon of people who are involved in wrongdoing, they would either have resigned already or when, when they are faced with the, uh, uh, the investigation and there's possible disciplinary action, they resign. So, so from a, from a consequence management perspective, what we have been saying all along is that when you resign, of course you terminate your employer and employee relationship, but we, we, we should not stop there. And that's what we are doing. But there's a bigger question to it really, is that if we want to really dive deep into this phenomenon of people in employment and committing acts of corruption and irregularity with the view that you know whenever they are done with their corrupt acts and then they leave so for me it it, it really goes deep into the organization or organizational management and the extent to which there are measures that are put in place in every organization to ensure that there's measures to mitigate. Because in some of the instances, uh, Honorable Chair, we pronounce ourselves, for example, in the COVID-19 investigation, we've said in some instances, one individual would be responsible for all the processes end to end. If you find that kind of a phenomenon, it should immediately be a risk indicator that something is wrong here. So, so Honorable Van Minen, I, I, I really would like to take that away uh, so that, you know, at, in, as, as, we, as we recommend uh, to, to, to the state institutions and possibly we should also, you know, recommend to the, to the auditors, you know, the questions are always asked when organizations go under, the question becomes where were the auditors, where were the risk managers? because they are expected to be the ones that really on a, on a proactive basis determine these risks and be able to give assurance to the boards and so on so that, uh, that the risks are mitigated. But for purposes of our investigation, the best we can do is that we determine what were their responsibilities and trace them wherever they are, uh, wherever they are, so that we can take action against them, uh, be it civil litigation or criminal action. Uh, it, it, it's really disheartening to know that, you know, there's this phenomenon of people uh, committing acts and, 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 and leaving. Uh, and then the legal process, of course, uh, you know, taking its course, uh, it, it almost seems like, uh, you know, it takes long. Uh, but at least in our environment, in our investigations, 
the special tribunal has helped us to move even quicker. So that really that's the best of how, of how we can of how we can respond to that. And we'll, we'll want to make sure that as part of our recommendations, all of those come out uh, in, our, in our report. Uh, the slide on board appointment, uh, Honorable Van Minen, I'll leave that to Mr. Sibe. Mr. Sibe, just for the Honorable Van Minen, you can probably just, uh, uh, with, with your permission, Chair, I'm sure it's, it's, it, you, you can really guide that. Uh, uh, Honorable Van Minen wanted to really understand uh, around the board appointments. If you can do that, Mr. Sibe. And then the Kampa attorney question around taxation. Uh, if you can please uh, attend to, to those questions. Thank you, Honorable Chair. I appreciate uh, the opportunity. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Avicho. You let you get the rest of your team to respond to uh, the, the, the outstanding questions, and then we'll go to SCA. Thank you, Chair. And to you, Chair, I will start with the a question around the agreement that was signed, uh, the Luther's agreement. <laughs> um, Chairperson, we are following up on funds. It's not that we are leaving the funds uh, unattended. Um, I think in my slide, I did indicate at the bottom that we are looking at uh, recoveries and, and criminal referrals. So for all these amounts uh, and, and all these payments that were made, we are not just ignoring the issue of, of funds. We remember our core mandate is civil litigation and we are looking at recovering uh, the monies. But at the moment, our legals are, tr are trying to um, uh, sift the evidence and, 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 and ensure that we follow the, the right channels in terms of determining who, who is responsible for the payments. And, um, and on top of that, uh, Chair, we are also uh, intending uh, uh, declaring the, the, the contracts invalid. Um, we are, that's a process that we are following as well. So it's not like we are not following the money. It's just the 1.9, they are willing to settle on that one. Uh, the time period for our investigation, as, as, as Advocate Motibi has indicated, we intend finalizing the entire investigation by end of June this year, but uh, we may uh, finalize these matters before that time because tell space is almost complete. We are just um, uh, uh, in the process of giving other parties the right, the right of reply and, and, and then we'll take the process forward. Um, then the instruction uh, uh, that, 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 that was given by uh, the, the chairperson of the board, as well as then the former GCEO to Kampa. Uh, chairperson that we are looking, we are, we are considering recovering that amount from the responsible people. Um, it's not like we are leaving that uh, uh, issue uh, unattended. We are, we are really uh, working around the clock to get the funds back to, to the name. Um, chairperson, I needed to clear something around the chairperson that we are talking about. The chairperson that resigned recently is not the chairperson that I'm talking about. The, 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 the relevant chairperson at the, this relevant time was a certain Mr. Daniel, Daniel Manja, who was at the, head, at the helm of Daniel as the chairperson of the board during all those times. Um, that's the chairperson that we are talking about. It's not the one that recently resigned from Daniel. Um, and then uh, we, are, we, are not, we are not leaving the chairperson of the board. Everything that, that happened during that time. Remember, we already alluded to the fact that we are looking at um, the mal administration in the process of handling all the affairs of Daniel. And that for that reason, therefore, we are looking at um, also um, uh, tying, especially the chairperson, because all these appointments that were irregular, he ratified them. So we cannot leave anything, any stone and un un unturned. So we are just giving um, the other parties a right of reply at the moment. 
And in some instances where we don't have documents, we, we go to the parties and see what they have. If they do have, most of them, they have uh, responded and given us whatever documents that they had in their position. Um, so in terms of the, the question regarding the, uh, the, the company that's currently on business rescue, Chaperson, that we are following up on the directors of that company. We are not, we are not going to just leave everything at, 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 at that stage and say, uh, because it's under business rescue, we are not doing anything. Um, our legals have already indicated to us that we will be following up on the, on the directors of the companies. Um, what else? Um, how much was, was paid to the middlemen? Um, at the moment, there, there is no amount that we've identified having been paid to the middlemen. We also looked at the payments and the accounts of the service provider child space, um, uh, and, and, and we didn't find any payment that was made to the middlemen. Uh, however, Telspace, uh, the, the director of that company, had um, he's got about 79 other companies, and then we had to go through all those bank statements, and it was quite uh, an exercise to go through each and every bank statements to identify any payments made to the middlemen. But at this stage, we have not identified anything. Um, Yes, uh, I think the head has already uh, responded to the appointment of the board. Yes, we, we, we can confirm that the appointment of the board was irregular under the circumstances. It did not follow the processes of the Department of um, the Public Enterprises. Um, then I, I think I, I'm, I covered all the questions, uh, Chairperson. All right, um, thank you, uh, ma'am. Um, Babu Samu, you had a question. Are there, are there other responses? Are we done with responses to the first set? All right, Babu Samu, over to you. Well, thank, thank you very much, uh, uh, Chair Chairman. Uh, and, and thanks to the uh, SIU for uh, the report. Um, what, what has become clear is that even uh, through their own comment, uh, is, is that there is, there is depth uh, of um, a mal uh, administration, corruption, criminality um, within the institution, uh, which, which uh, tallies with what uh, the Auditor General's findings are. Uh, uh, of the company per se. Uh, which is a, has put up, out the wheels um, of functionality uh, of the entity in totality. There is a comment that uh, uh, the presenter has referred to um, on the scope um, a limitation uh, of their own investigation, something which uh, uh, gives some uh, inkling uh, that, that things might be even uh, worse than they are presented if the scope uh, of investigation would have somewhat been extended uh, to other areas. Uh, are, are they um, prepared to make such kind of proposition um, so, so, so that in their own uh, scope of work, they could unravel uh, whatever nature uh, of corruption, which uh, uh, has somewhat uh, got into uh, the, the, the core, uh, uh, the spine uh, of that uh, uh, entity. If, if, if that is possible, uh, looking into a number of things which are somewhat left behind, uh, or such, you could look into the entirety uh, of that capital expenditure and you look into matters of governance. And, and uh, uh, where I get comfort is, is as well the extent uh, of the outlook in terms of the investigation, uh, right through uh, the performance and observation uh, of the PFMA in totality. And, and that people could be found wanting just on their failure uh, to observe uh, the prescripts 
of uh, BFMA and their own procurement processes. And, and in this institution, um, that, that is a, a bit endemic and, and as such, uh, it could uh, assist overall to set that type of an example uh, to ensure that those who are in the public domain uh, would uh, uh, be 100% uh, implementing uh, the prescripts of the law as defined uh, through uh, the Public Finance Management Act. Thanks, Chair. All right, thank you much. Um, if the Esther, you may respond to that. Is that you? Sorry, sorry, Chair. Uh, there is indeed uh, an observation based on the investigation that there is maladministration and malpractices. There's also evidence pointing to corruption, uh, particularly in the intellectual property thefts and how it was really you know, taken out of uh, out of Dinell. Um, so the the question or the comment requiring requiring a response in a form of a proposition. Uh, it is our view that it it could be that a picture a picture could be worse if our scope had widened and included other areas. And to that extent, uh, my colleague, Ms. Kasiva, has indicated that we are engaging with the department. Uh, and that will, that will enable us to then determine the areas that still need to be included in the investigation. And as by law, we are required to then process the amendment to the proclamation. So Honorable Somio, uh, I would, in principle, agree and, and really say this proposition that yes, the picture is likely to, to look worse than it looks now uh, if we widen the scope and look at other areas uh, of, of, uh, of investigation. Thank you very much, Chair, I appreciate it. All right, um, thank you very much, um, HOU. Um, may we go to the presentation on South African Airways. No, thank you, Chair. Uh, while the presentation is being loaded, uh, Chair, I omitted to uh, introduce uh, uh, one of our colleagues, uh, uh, Mr. Kaiser Khanyaho, he's also uh, part of the team from, from SIU. Uh, Chair, without further ado, uh, again, uh, my colleague, uh, Mrs. Tatsibe, uh, is leading this investigation. Uh, Mr. Tatsibe, thank you so much. I really uh, would like to hand over to you without, uh, without wasting any more time. Thanks. Thank you, HIU. Thank you, Chairperson. Now we move to the uh, SAA investigation. Uh, our presentation outline again, uh, uh, Chairperson is going to be a, a, a very detailed presentation because this is the first time we're appearing before this committee. Um, um, we're going to deal with the SAA, SIU secondment agreement, SIU mandate and focus areas, objectives of the investigation, key deliverables of the investigation, preliminary findings, outstanding work, limitations and challenges. Next slide, sir. Uh, Honorable Chair, there was a secondment agreement uh, between SIU and SAA that was signed uh, during 2019. And the purpose of this secondment agreement was for the SIU to assist SAA with capacity in its forensic investigation department and also to collect evidence for the motivation for, for a proclamation. 
The investigation revealed evidence of contravention of processes and possible acts of criminality by SAA staff and SAA service providers. The motivation for a proclamation was submitted to the Office of the President. <clears throat> Okay, during this period, um, the SIU reviewed five forensic investigation reports uh, that were uh, done by a number of forensic uh, firms that were appointed by SAA Forensic Division. And we also looked at the annexures and evidence and we confirmed a number of findings thereof. In respect of these matters, uh, we, uh, the evidence pointing to criminal activities was referred to the NPA. And, uh, as, as, and then after we received our proclamation, which I'm going to be talking to right now, then we then appointed a senior counsel to just review evidence in respect of um, five matters in this space for civil litigation. The matters that were referred to the NPA uh, uh, chairperson, these are matters that were already in the State Capture Commission. So evidence in number of them was led in the State Capture um, uh, Inquiry. We are collaborating with the State Capture in a number of uh, areas and um, where, where, where necessary, uh, we, we share notes. Uh, in terms of then the second main uh, potential outcomes, uh, we, there, was a, there was a contract for the ground power units. The, the finding in terms of this contract was that the sale was not executed in terms of SEM processes, uh, which required that, the, that uh, the SAA to convene a disposal committee. Then the SAA the SAT board accepted these functions and they became a committee in itself. So this matter was referred to NPA as already uh, alluded to. What we are doing uh, as SIU currently in terms of our current proclamation now, we've appointed the current uh, the, the, the senior counsel and he is reviewing evidence with a, review, with a view to recover 241 million rent. There's a Palore investigation uh, uh, chair. This one was, uh, this, this contract, actually this appointment um, uh, uh, resulted in an irregular extension of another contract. Uh, we identified conflict of interest between a senior employee of SAT who was also appointed as a member of the, 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 the CFST for the specific project. So that, could, that, that was a team that was dealing with this specific project. And his daughter was employed at this company. So he had a number of interaction with this company. So this matter is also in the NPA and we are currently uh, uh, reviewing uh, and quantifying values uh, uh, between uh, the investigators and our senior counsel who's been appointed by the SIU. This also we are trying to uh, see if we can recover the money. The aircraft tire contract chair, this is the, 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 the contract uh, where there was, it, it was mainly, the, it was a true supplier development program where SAT and SAA, they didn't actually uh, adhere to the procurement processes. What they would do, they will instruct a company to, um, to form partnership with a, a, a BEE company. And, um, and then in terms of this, this contract, there was um, a, an unethical relationship between um, a, AAR slash JAM aviation directors and SAT employees, but this matter is also um, in the NPA. The testimony was given in the Zondo Commission. Uh, what we are responsible for now uh, is then the civil litigation process. We are intending to set the contract aside and also recover whatever monies that were paid by a SAT to, to, the, to this uh, company. Next slide. Then the paint contract also is an irregular contract uh, 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 because the procurement process that was followed was irregular. 
Um, SAT paid a service provider 54.7 million for a paint, which was more than double the budgeted amount over a period of three years. That service provider also changed the paint manufacturers or product range shortly after being appointed as a craft paint supplier for three years. We, um, that also has been handed over to the NPA and they are dealing with the criminal aspect of the investigation. The SIU is uh, reviewing evidence with a view to recover the 54.7 million rand that was paid to this company. That is just covering the segment um, uh, process and the, the, the period uh, of our involvement within SAA. Next slide. Next slide, sir. Okay. Then I move to the SIU mandate and focus areas. Um, Chairperson, on the 31st of January, which was last year, we received a proclamation R2 of 2020, directing us to investigate the procurement of and contracting for Airbus contract, uh, sorry, Airbus aircrafts, maintenance, repair, and operation services uh, uh, within South African um, Airways Technical Services the legal services in terms of two specific uh, 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 procurement processes where SAA was appointing a panel of legal service, uh, legal uh, panel of legal experts and we also investigating service providers that were appointed to expedite the implementation of SAA turnaround term, uh, turnaround plan in terms of two um, uh, process procurement processes the proclamation further mandated SIU to investigate maladministration in the affairs of SAA in relation to travel rebates, benefit, payment made to SAA vendors, and the implementation of that 30% broad-based uh, Black Economic Empowerment um, Supplier Set Aside Initiative in respect of the supply and delivery of jet fuel. Next slide. Key objectives of our investigation. We want to review compliance with the prescribed legislation in respect of procurement processes. We want to identify irregular and or unlawful conduct on the part of SAA officials or third parties. We want to identify and quantify losses incurred by SAA and facilitate the recovery of losses. And we also want to identify evidence pointing towards corruption. We want to collect unlawfully admissible evidence to approach courts to set aside the contracts entered into between SAA and service providers. And um, we want to collect lawfully admissible evidence with a view to facilitate the institution of criminal and or disciplinary proceeding against complicit parties. And also we want to provide recommendations on the improvements to systemic weaknesses identified. Next slide. Um, our key deliverables to a person is to institute and recommend inst uh, the, 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 the institution of civil proceedings by SAA for the necessary relief, including the recovery of any losses suffered by, the, by SAA or the state. When I refer evidence of misconduct for the institution of disciplinary or corrective action, Refer evidence indicating or points to a criminal offense to the relevant prosecuting authority. Identify systemic gaps and make systemic recommendations to, uh, to avoid identified instances of maladministration from reoccurring in future. Combine closure reports on all sub investigations conducted and submit a presidential report as envisaged in terms of our section 41G of the SIU Act. Next slide. <clears throat> Now, when I move to the first uh, 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 allegation, the Airbus contract, uh, the, the allegation here, it, it, it focuses on the allegations that was received by the SIU that SAA entered into a purchase agreement with Airbus for the purchase of 15 airframes slash aircraft at a cost of 38,000 um, uh, uh, 38, US dollars for which payment were delayed due to additional five aircrafts. This caused, the delays caused some financial implications uh, for the SAA. Then a further new A320 narrow body aircrafts 
um, well list, however, due to conduct of key people, the delivery was delayed by four months and that had a negative financial impact on SAA. In this regard, Chaperson, we prioritize six contracts for investigation and these are at various stages of completion. Next slide. Just as a background to Salem Lisbeck, Chair, on 6 September 2012, SAA board approved 20 A320 200 aircraft sale and leaseback transaction to Bank of China Aviation, uh, which we then call BOC. The BOC undertook to commit after the release of the 2011-2012 annual report. After considering the risk profile of SAA, the Bank of China Aviation took a decision to finance only five aircraft and not the full 20 as originally anticipated. This then forced SAA at the time into a bidding process and, 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 and confined the bidding to the final bidders, which was then the standard uh, chartered or, or Pembroke, uh, the, the Bank of China Aviation, and also the Standard Bank, again for best and final, final offers. Then after these were presented to, to SAA, then the board decided to award the sale and lease back of the first 10 aircrafts to Pembroke. Whilst SAA made a profit on the sale of each aircraft because they sold, they, they paid 38.9 uh, 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 38 uh, uh, billion I mean, US dollars per aircraft from the Airbus and then they sold the same for 41, for 41 million uh, US dollars to Pembroke. So they made a, a, a profit uh, for, for on the sale of those. However, if you look at the total contract, um, uh, they, they made a profit of 20.8 million for the sale. However, in terms of the, the lease, then they made a loss. Can we move to the next slide? In addition, SAA paid uh, Airbus some of 115 US dollars for pre-delivery payment, including the postponement of delivery date in terms of the agreement that was signed on the 24th of January. When the sale and sale and, and the lease back deal was concluded, Pem, uh, Pembroke had to reinvest SAA with, with this PDP, this pre-delivery payment. And at, at this point in time, SAA has not uh, 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 given us any proof that this payment had been provided, uh, to, had been provided by, uh, had been made by Pembroke to SAA. So we are still awaiting that. Otherwise, if this was not uh, uh, made, if Pembroke didn't pay, that would mean a loss of about 1.7 billion to SAA. In terms of the lease contract, SAA paid monthly rental fees of 323 US dollars, 0.5 US dollars per month for 12 years for each aircraft from the date of delivery, which makes a total value of one aircraft to um, now we're looking at, you know, for the entire lease period, it, it came to 46.5 million US dollars per the lease period. In terms of the agreement, then uh, in terms of this agreement, the lease was a net lease. Maintenance and repairs were for the lessee responsibilities at their own expense. For all maintenance required each, uh, for each contract during the, the lease term, Pembroke was to pay back the maintenance money to SAA upon receiving maintenance receipt within six months. So they had to repair, this was an operating lease, even though this was an operating lease, but SAA had to, to, to kind of like uh, 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 accept risk and rewards in this regard and maintain its own aircraft, then submit the receipts to Pembroke within six months. Then in addition, the lessee was responsible for insurance at its own expense. 
there's no proof that um, Pembroke paid SAA for any of the maintenance uh, that was done in this uh, class. The sale and leaseback disadvantage SAA because at face value, SAA lost in excess of 356 million rent uh, from this transaction. The SIU is awaiting proof of all payments, which is PDP and maintenance and repair cost from Pembroke in this regard. Next slide. Now I'm moving to the individual contracts. We looked at a contract that, uh, that SAA had with a company called Fly Forfa Airways. And during 2016, SAA entered into a dry lease agreement with Fly Forfa for the lease of secondhand Keiko charters. In this regard, an irregular procurement process was followed. Then the approved value of the lease um, was 172, 000, uh, sorry, 172 million rent per, 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 um, uh, per, per aircraft. And then the conditions of the contract were not, were not adhered. Why are we saying the conditions? Fly Forfa had to own the contracts in terms of the conditions of the lease. However, they only list the aircrafts from somewhere else, from someone else. So for them, they list the contracts from someone else and then list, this, uh, list the aircrafts to SAA. There was also a three months wet lease contract already in place between the two parties. This wet lease continued to be extended irregularly. One aircraft was grounded for a period of eight months between 2018 and 2019. However, SAA continued to pay for the services. During July 2019, SAA extended the contract with Flafofa for another 36 months via an ordenda, which is also a process that is irregular. We are now looking at um, setting aside, we've already appointed as SIU, we've appointed as a senior counsel, uh, and the, the intention is to set this contract aside. And we are looking at a possible recovery of 300 million in this matter. Um, and, and we also are preparing evidence for criminal, um, uh, for criminal um, uh, prosecuting, prosecution. The disciplinary at this stage, we, we have not, um, we, 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 we do not have anyone who will be held responsible in terms of the disciplinary process because all the people that were involved, they left the employ of SAA. Next slide. <clears throat> and then the other uh, aircraft contracts that we are looking at, um, they are at different stages. We are missing certain documents and uh, currently we are making use of documents that we imaged from a former employee of SAA. So, it, you know, for this reason, we are aiming at using the best um, available evidence that we, that we can uh, get. It appears that the appointment of one service provider was not in line with the civil, civil aviation regulation. This is just like high level findings in terms of these five other matters that, that we are looking at. There's possible conflict of interest. The director of one company is a former employee of SAA um, and one aircraft was paid but did not take a single flight. SAA accepted risk and rewards on aircrafts um, uh, whilst uh, in an operating lease. We are still in the process of compiling our evidence in this regard. So uh, at this stage, our civil and criminal referral are still to be determined. Next slide. The maintenance and technical repair uh, contracts, the allegations received by the SIU relates to 84 contracts procured by SAA uh, relating to maintenance, repairs and operation, which contract it is alleged are beset of irregularities such as inflated pricing, fronting conflict of interest on the part of SAA staff, fictitious vendors, fictitious work orders, fictitious bank accounts overpayment, non-delivery, non-performance, no value for money. The investigation process focuses on those areas that were, uh, uh, that are part of our allegations. Next slide. Okay. 
in terms of these contracts, we, 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 we identified and we are looking at contracts that some where we started whilst we were at SAA during secondment, and this is one of those contracts. We are looking at a contract called Matlo Wonke, um, that was appointed uh, to supply staff transport for the Cape Town Johannesburg and East London station. Um, in terms of the process that was followed, um, there was a procurement process that was followed, but however, there were irregularities in the process. The company that tendered for the work that was awarded, um, it owned none, none of the vehicles that it submitted um, for the bid. And SAA didn't do any due diligence in terms of verifying that this, um, these vehicles were actually owned by the company in question. Then after the award, as a result of that, um, the company failed to deliver in terms of the contract. So then SAA had to then extend the original contract that had expired and, 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 and for that reason, it incurred fruitless and wasteful expenditure to the tune of 824,000. Um, we are referring this contract also to the senior council. The senior council has been appointed to deal with this matter. So in total, there are seven matters that are currently um, uh, referred to senior council for potential civil recovery. So in this regard, we want to set the contract aside, recover all the amounts that were paid by SAA to this company, and also recover the, the, this 824 that was paid um, because it was an expense that was incurred by SAA as a failure, as a result of the failure from, the, from this company. At this juncture, we have not identified any evidence linking um, anyone to criminal except the misrepresentation for, for by the company, which we are going to be referring. And um, in terms of disciplinary, uh, then the officials that were involved in this are no longer in the employ of SAA. Then the other one that we, um, that we are involved with is the contract between SAA and Mackenzie. Um, whilst we were busy with this investigation, um, we were then approached as, a, as, a road, as, a, as already indicated that uh, we, are, we are collaborating with the, 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 the Zondo State Capture in terms of this investigation. We were um, uh, con contacted by um, the, the, the leading, uh, the evidence leader from the state, um, the state capture inquiry, and we were advised that McKenzie would like to uh, settle a number of contracts with some of the institutions like SAA, ESCOM, Transnet. Um, and as a result of that, we got involved um, in the process. McKenzie had been uh, awarded a contract by SAA. This contract included um, uh, 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 um, some kind of um, working capital um, uh, contract where they had to advise SAA uh, on, 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 on issues that relate to, um, it was mainly, It was, it, was, it was mainly to deal with organizational structure and alignment of management capabilities. Basically, that had to do with how then SAA could effectively manage certain aspects of its business. So the contract, uh, the amount varied because the initial amount was a fixed cost of 3.7 million, but then um, tied to that was a 7% of the full value of positive cash release opportunities. That we, we, we looked at that and then we felt that, you know, it was very open to corruption because um, anybody could then say uh, they, were ex they were extremely beneficial to this and then they would then, Mackenzie would get the 7%. And then the other percentage that would get, it would be 7% of the 80% of the value of full value of the positive cash release. So, but this amount was then, uh, um, uh, it was an amount that was locked to 80 million rent that McKenzie had to be paid by SAA. So in this regard, then uh, they were paid in excess of 12 million rent. 
And um, for this contract, Mackenzie um, then uh, appointed regiments as their strategic partner. So as a result of the evidence that we presented to them at the state capture inquiry, then Mackenzie offered to pay the entire contract value um, before appearing at the Zondo um, yes, uh, Commission. And that was last year. So the SIU is assisting SAA with these negotiations for settlements and agreement. On the other hand, as a consequence of the same contract, SAT lost in excess of 600 million in stock, which was declared obsolete by, the, by McKenzie and regiments. This matter was referred to NPA and AFU during the settlement agreement. So as a result of their report, or of which was linked to the, which was which was actually linked to um, the, the the positive cash release. Then there was this obsolete. There was a stock that was owned by SAT that was sale for net, next to nothing, and um, a report was quantified by an expert, and then then the, the cost was quantified that you know the loss was six hundred million, and AFU is dealing with that matter. We are looking at now, based on the settlement, we are looking at that 12 million rent contract, uh, sorry, 12 million rent as a result of the settlement agreement. We've assisted uh, um, the, the department, meaning the institution SAA. We, all of us, we are in the process, we are still negotiating because we are of the view that maybe um, it will be in the best interest of SAA to also recover interest um, on that total capital amount because SAA paid McKenzie uh, from the funds that were uh, borrowed. So they didn't have the funds, but based on the, the contract that they had, they borrowed funds to pay McKenzie. So that interest is subject of now negotiation. So we are at that stage at the moment. The criminal referrals, we are still, they are still being determined because we are still investigating the conduct of the employees from SAA, as well as the conduct of McKenzie and its strategic partner, which is a regiment. Um, and the disciplinary referrals are also st are still to be determined. Next slide. Then the procurement of legal services. There were two allegations in this regard. There was one that, uh, that the SIU received that, that one SAA board member was rendering legal services to SAA through his firm of attorneys. The other one was that one uh, senior official of, of, of SAA failed to disclose his interest and then he appointed a company uh, that where his brother was a director. And he also appointed the same company for work uh, despite um, the, the lack of experience in that area. Next slide. <clears throat> Our preliminary investigation, we prioritize the first one being the member that's currently in the SAA because that member was occupying a very senior position. So here we reviewed the, the legal services uh, uh, pro, uh, procure, the procurement contracts and, and we reviewed two procurement contracts in, in, in particular. Um, we found that you know uh, one senior official was conflicted in the appointment of certain legal firm, and we recommended the suspension of this official. We also gave the, the, the official a right of reply, and there are certain documents that he undertook to provide to the SIU, uh, which we are still awaiting. Uh, at the moment, we have not referred any criminal referral, but we are going to be because there is, a, uh, there is uh, monies that flowed between this company and this official. Uh, in a form of a business, uh, the, the funds were paid to his business um, account. And even that business, he never declared that business to SAA. So we are looking into that uh, matter. So we are anticipating the delivery of five, uh, sorry, four disciplinary referrals in this, and that will be done at the, before the end of this month. Next, next slide. Then the, the SAA turnaround plan. This was um, a contract uh, that SAA had, uh, that, that had to um, advertise uh, because they needed, a, 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 they needed an agent 
uh, plan uh, at the time when things were not going okay with the, with the, with the business with their business so they appointed a service provider for business process management services and uh, revenue assurance management one was at 70 million and one was 100 million respectively next slide so um one uh, both contracts were awarded to one company being Tata. There were procurement irregularities that were identified. This matter was not competitive. They did this procurement through an emergency con uh, process and they appointed, uh, um, uh, so there were three companies that were uh, selected and they were given, uh, they were given uh, opportunities to code. And two of the companies complained about the time considering the work that had to be done. However, this other contractor, this other service provider was ready. He then they, 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 they submitted everything uh, for both contracts and then both contracts were awarded to this contractor. Then we found that um, the person who was dealing with this uh, uh, procurement was conflicted because he had relations with this company. However, he resigned from the employee of SAA and uh, what we have done uh, in terms of this during the secondment, we recommended the cancellation of this contract immediately and it was uh, implemented. SAA really uh, canceled this contract then and they saved, then we managed to save the institution 130 million rand. And we are now in the process of, um, of recovering the 78 million rand that was paid to this company. Uh, we have appointed a senior counsel in this regard, and um, I think uh, he's busy reviewing our evidence, and then he, we will be able to give the, the court dates the, the court dates in due course. One criminal referral is under review, and we are hoping that it will be uh, finalized by the end of this month, and there are four disciplinary referrals that we are currently packaging for SAA, which also we are anticipating that they will be done by end of this month. Next slide. Then there is uh, uh, another investigation. Uh, this is maladministration. This is a simple abuse of travel rebates by members of the SAA. Um, uh, there were allegations that these uh, the members of SAA are selling this travel benefit for, 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 for financial gain. So then um, this is a benefit uh, that is uh, uh, given by SAA to qualifying person, and they are able to travel across the world at SAA's expense. This has been happening um, uh, uh, during the time, and, um, and now employees who could not travel, they will then sell the benefit to either family members or friends, and they will fly at SAA expense. Next slide. This, uh, in this regard, we, our investigations are going uh, uh, sorry, are ongoing. Um, we uh, we've identified at least uh, uh, you know we've identified at least uh, um, at 600 million that that was linked to uh, the loss that SAA um, uh, incurred in terms of these uh, matters. But when we investigated. We finalized two of these matters where no irregularities were found. We, in these instances, the responsible members, they really fly, flew to the destination and they flew with their members. So it's a question of trying to uh, gather evidence to, um, to also um, uh, establish whether the person, the actual person uh, used the benefit or the person sold the benefit. There are other matters where members have sold, but the, our investigation is ongoing in this regard. Next slide. I think, uh, Chair, at this point, um, I will just um, uh, skip these slides because these, the, the, the following slides, these are matters that we have, um, that, we, that are, are under consideration, but we have not made any, um, any considerable uh, uh, um, impact on them. So I will just jump to the next, to the very, okay, next slide. Next slide again because here again, we, we have not done any, anything. 
Then um, I'm moving to the same slide, similar to the one that we, are, we were looking at at Daniel. Uh, Chair, what we did in, in, in respect of SAA, we looked at the three years from 2015 to 2017, just to, um, uh, to, to, to establish whether the company is, is, is doing well in terms of the financial performance. And as can be seen, uh, the company has not been performing well. Um, uh, uh, operating costs are they are they exceed the, the income uh, that that SAA is making, um, and 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 they have not made any uh, profit for the for the for the for the three years that are under review, and and in this we are looking at. Um, trying to, again, similar to Danelle, to understand what were the root causes of all of these um, issues, what led to this, uh, um, uh, the SAA as, as, as situation. And we're hoping that, you know, by the end of, of our project, we'll be able to, um, to, to come up with some clear answers uh, that we can present to the public on, on, on the causes of all the problems that SAA is facing. So on face value, you can see that the, 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 the company uh, has not been making any profit for the three years. It's actually also technically um, uh, insolvent. Let's move to the next slide. Next slide again. Okay. So even the financial position chair, if you look at it, uh, um, this, this, this displays a, a real um, constrained company in terms of finances. Uh, the financial position is, is in a dire uh, situation. Um, the assets, yes, they do have assets, but look at the liabilities. The far exceeds, uh, actually they double the, 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 the assets. So in terms of liquidity, uh, unfortunately, that's that's the that's the situation at hand, and 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 apparently this information is in the public space. Next slide. Next slide again. Chairperson, this investigation was only proclaimed last year during uh, uh, January and just before COVID and the restrictions that were imposed. So it's still in the early stages. We anticipate to finalize this entire investigation uh, by uh, 2022. Uh, but whilst we are investigating, we are looking at all the employees of SAA the executive, the board members who left, we are actually working closer and monitoring the, the, the evidence that's being led at the commission. We're working uh, uh, closely with the commission in terms of uh, the secretariat, in terms of getting whatever evidence that we need from that side. And we are hoping that um, by uh, the end of uh, this year, maybe an impact or maybe a report on just maladministration would be uh, will be uh, finalized. Next slide. The limitations, uh, Chair, they are similar to the Danelle one, um, because here we've got SAA personnel who are no longer uh, working and, and, and the, some are disgruntled because of the termination of contracts. Some, they, are, they just do not want to cooperate. Some, they, they do want to cooperate, but they are not available. Some, they are overseas and all of that. that that's, the, that's, the, that's the reality of the matter. Then the lack of original documents. It's, it's, a, it's a problem because um, they were using a, a round robin a system uh, of approving documents uh, by SAA executives, especially as well as the board members. Now uh, to secure certain documents is a nightmare. We've been to their storerooms. We've uh, they, they, we they've, we ref, were referred to the darkest places where documents could be found. We went there, and and unfortunately, we are struggling. And, and if you look at uh, the SAA, it's also working on a skeleton staff. Uh, we are working through the office of the forensic, um, uh, 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 the, the, that forensic unit of SAA. And unfortunately, there's only one person there who's assisting us. And then sometimes we feel um, it's not gonna, you know, it's, it's not easy to retrieve documents when SAA staff is not even uh, on site. 
So we are identifying officials that are responsible for document and record keeping, and we are looking at maybe a, 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 a possible disciplinary referrals in those regards. Um, and we are looking at the National Archives Act uh, and the contraventions, therefore, the, the, thereafter, then we are going to refer to the relevant um, uh, uh, institutions for disciplinary and other actions that are possible. I think that concludes my, my presentation, Chairperson. Thank you. Yeah, right, um, head of unit. Thank you, thank you, uh, honorable chair and honorable members. Uh, honorable chair, uh, this is really a classical, a classical example of what happens in a situation where uh, matters has really been left to deteriorate to the extent where the business is grounded to a halt. The limitations that my colleague uh, as presented are very real uh, and they really uh, contributing to the delay in the in the investigations the state of SAA at the moment uh, is it, really dire uh, we're dealing with business rescue practitioners on the one hand uh, but on the other hand the law still says the accounting authority is the board. So in many instances, uh, we've had to ensure that, you know, we still deal with the board, but the business rescue practitioners also have their legal responsibilities, you know, uh, to make sure that uh, they execute on their business rescue plan. This is really, you know, presented amongst others, uh, a, a liaison issue uh, with, the, with the SAA as an institution. Uh, as my colleague has indicated, many of the employees are, re are likely to be laid off. And as a result, that has really cost, uh, I mean, in, a, in an institution which is, uh, which is not you know, facing uh, a situation that SA is facing, we would work, you know, very closely with the SCM, SCM uh, departments. Uh, would work closely with, uh, you know, you know, other departments. But in this case, the airline is actually almost uh, at a disintegration. So that that really presents a serious problem. Be that as it may, honorable chair and honorable members, we have identified uh, and I've been engaging with the team. Although my colleague indicates that it's an ongoing investigation, yes, it's been proclaimed, you know, just over a year ago, uh, factoring in COVID-19, the team drew up a project plan that indicates that the investigation will probably end somewhere in 2022, but we would like to fast track that. Uh, and that means that we need to provide more resources to Ms. Kasiva's team, just in the interest of ensuring that this is a situation, this is a company that has grounded to a hold and is probably disintegrating. So we need to determine as quickly as possible where we can recover or where we can really ensure that, uh, you know, uh, SA, SAA uh, uh, claims back whatever has been lost from anyone. Um, you'll see in most, of the, in most of the slides is that outcomes, some of the outcomes are still to be determined. Uh, we, will, we will be allocating uh, resources in terms of forensic accountants so that they can really uh, crunch the numbers quickly there and determine what needs to be, what needs to be followed. Um, uh, what else I needed to just pick on? Um, no, thanks, thanks, Chair. I really wanted to, you know, uh, just augment on the on just the state of affairs of SAA and how is it that it's impacting on the investigation. But we're doing our best, such that uh, the investigation uh, uh, is not uh, is not is not really disturbed, such that we don't produce outcomes. Thank you very much. Yo, hi. 
the, the state capture, then the state collapse. This is a classic case of well, why SAA became exactly what it is now. Um, so, on the Spambarazos has been a very, very depressing um, presentations. Um, you just leave one at a loss of words, actually. Right, Honorable Liz, you will be first off the bat. And Honorable Dirk. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I've got a very poor signal, which is very unusual for me. So um, forgive me if I break up. Um, Mr. Chairman, there's not a hell of a lot we can say, um, except thank you for the investigations. And the sad thing is that uh, very little of what's being said this evening is new. In fact, I'm not sure there's anything that's new. It's stuff that we've been raising for years and years. And even now, we're still pouring money into, into what Advocate Motibi uh, describes as a disintegrating entity. Um, so, yeah, it's it's just it's 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 very sad, and um, and and yet we we carry on with it. That's that's even worse. Just on the question that Advocate Motibi makes the point, I think quite correctly, uh, in terms of 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 co completing these investigations. I mean, the the of the SAA staff as opposed to SAA technical. Um, the majority of those staff have, uh, except for the pilots, have accepted the severance package and will be gone and, and almost impossible to, to, to deal with um, in any comprehensive way. But what really worries me is there's clearly a whole lot of those people who are going to be paid massive severance packages who are actually part of the looting team, um, and 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 I'm just wondering, um, you know, I mean, we haven't been given any names this evening, uh, and I understand that perhaps it's too early for that, but I do think that there's an urgency to identify the looters before they get paid out the millions that that is involved in the VSP and and probably already been paid. Um, so, so that that's I don't know how the SIU can speed that up, but yeah, I don't know that uh, anyone else is is doing anything about it. The, I didn't pick up any investigation into the Dudum Yeni um, Airbus swap deal that was so controversial, um, and in the end, Cynthia Stimple lost her job because of it because she whistle blew on it. Um, is that something that, that is part of the investigation? Um, yeah, Mr. Chairman, it's just a, a mess and, and irrecoverable in our opinion. Thank you. Uh, yep, it is a mess. It's like a scrambled egg, trying to unscramble the scrambled egg. Can't tell the yolk from the, the white. All right, Honorable um, Dex, and then Honorable uh, Hatebe, or Honorable Sommer, then Honorable Hat. Right in that order, your colleagues, and then the SIU will come in to respond. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you Chairperson. Uh, yeah, sorry. Thank you, Chair. Um, let me just put this here. Chairperson, um, uh, yeah, it's really, Chair, it's really a sad state of affairs that, uh, at SAA. Um, uh, I was going through the history of SAA and I came across a report, a powerful report in uh, tabled in Parliament, where the DA is, uh, where the DA is questioning and raising questions regarding the SAA to the then Minister of, uh, of, of, of Public Enterprises or SAA Chef, Chef, or Minister Hatebe, former Minister Hatebe. That was in that was in 2001, 2002. 
know, where these issues are being raised uh, in uh, in Parliament. And as the report, you can, uh, members can go back and can go research and find this report. And because it was already in a mess, it was in a deep crisis. And uh, the minister's response was that, the minister was uh, responding to a question by the DA, and the minister's response was that it is the DG that are creating the mess at, 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 at ESCOM. He's 10 DJ in 2001, 2002, as responsible. His work in that report, the, the, the DG is responsible for the mess, SAA. Then you had the whole Coleman saga where he takes our, 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 our assets, uh, freehold uh, uh, air buses, he sells it off, and he then goes and leases it back. Uh, from the from the, from the company he sold it to, and he had interest, he had a financial interest uh, in that in that in that in that, in that, in that company, and then we give him two hundred million rand approved by treasury, which some of our current ministers, sitting as ministers in in government, was responsible for that day, when they were in finance other committees, uh, authorizing the pay, the payment of two hundred million rand as a golden handshake to to uh, to uh, to uh, Coleman, and no one is speaking about that day. Now, if you want to deal with the rot in, the, in, in, in SAA, you have to go to the bottom of where it started and then clean this thing up out from the, from, 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 from the, from the bottom. As a, you must follow the evidence. Do not follow people when you do this investigation. I'm not for one minute saying that the, uh, the SIU is following people. In fact, I'm very impressed with the SIU because they are not, they don't follow people, they follow evidence. And I was impressed with uh, last week when uh, Advocate MTB made uh, a, a presentation and said, no, they don't want to go on a fishing expedition, which I appreciated because I do not like investigators that goes on a, a fishing exp exp expedition. But when it comes to the issue of, the, of uh, SAA, we really need to get to the bottom of it. And uh, if we want to raise, if we're honest, want to be honest with ourselves, and we want to deal with, uh, with it, there's no use blaming certain people uh, when uh, they, from the early days, this thing was was falling for, uh, uh, for falling falling up falling apart. So I say I'm just mentioning these issues there because those crimes that was committed, those alleged crimes was committed those years, and no action was taken. Absolutely no action was taken. In fact, people are given a whole golden hand, handshake, and uh, nobody's interested in prosecuting them and going up, uh, uh, after them. Now, I just have one issue that I want to raise here. It was raised by, uh, by Lee, by Honor Police. Now, the reason why I raised it, because this, it's in the media there, and the media have uh, a particular narrative about the previous chair of the board, Tutu Mnyeni. The particular narrative out in the media uh, about uh, the chair of, of the board. Now, I know that uh, the SIU don't go to fishing expeditions. They're following evidence of people. But there is that narrative out there about uh, the former chair, Tutu Mnyeni. Now, I may have missed it in the presentation because at one stage I had to deal with some uh, academic records from university. I had to try and get them, so which I need urgently tomorrow. So. I may have lost it along the, the along the line um, in the presentation. I've heard once uh, all in the presentation most of the of the referrals and and, and, and investigations against officials that have been wrongdoing, recovering money from officials, referring of the officials, and then towards the end I heard uh, one only the mention of a board, two board members. Involved in in, in, in in wrongdoing, so I basically have not heard about the board besides that one incident. But the chair of the board, which there's a particular narrative out there in the media about that, uh, I've heard, I haven't heard anything uh, the, uh, the the in the presentation about any wrongdoing on her part or investigations against her or findings against her or referrals against against, against her. So I may have missed that, but when I was still busy, but I have not had it. So I just want, uh, I don't, I'm not making an issue about it. I, I'm right here because of the the narrative out in the media. Because when you speak about SAA, people point fingers at uh, Tutu Mnyeni. So I will just be of interest. Uh, I haven't heard anything that there's any wrongdoing for, from her, on her part or any investigations or referrals against her in this report. If the... SIU can just speak, uh, just verify that, 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 that for us. But it's not a big issue, it's just the issue of 
the, the of interest because of the narrative out there. Thank you, uh, Chairperson, uh, very, very much. Thank you. That's honorable Dirks. Honorable Samia? Uh, honorable Chair, uh, uh, and as I would thank, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, it's a very extensive report which uh, covers a lot of uh, things of the road, uh, and and uh, it, it really comes to heart as to how our institutions uh, are somewhat uh, behaving. Uh, look into one one thing that you have raised on the uh, McKinley uh, settlement. Um, uh, which, which is as a result of their own involvement um, and the payment uh, in terms of the cost of 12 million rand. Then you go down in that slide, there's an indication of a, a costed loss of about 600 million rand, which, which would, has been as a result of the outcomes um, of their own report, uh, which... Uh, has somewhat been discredited on the basis of their own uh, appointment and the actual performance of that kind of work. And, and then you are talking about uh, matters of interest into um, the uh, amount as equal uh, in terms of gain uh, out of what has been paid to them. I don't know what is it that you could uh, say and try to do in as far as a resultant uh, loss, uh, which has been uh, a cause uh, because of their own uh, finding leading to uh, SAA acting wrongly uh, in terms of such sale uh, of their uh, own uh, uh, capital uh, infrastructure. And, and, and uh, my, my view is that uh, it, it might be um, of use to have a look into a totality uh, of such transactions. Um, and, and, and therefore the loss is beyond the 12 million rand. So in a proposition and, and getting involved uh, in terms of finding that settlement, there's a causal loss, uh, which has uh, been a consequence uh, to um, the outcome uh, of their own uh, discredited piece of work if they commit to uh, pay the entirety of the amount which they have been paid. Um, I, I don't know what, what would be your view uh, in, this, in, that, in, that, in that regard. But, but, but thank, thanks for the, for the, for the report. It, it surely uh, is a very extensive uh, report, a report which goes to heart as, as, to, as to why it has caused the collapse uh, of a such an institution which I think if things are done quite correctly in both recoveries and as well uh, the matters of uh, following proper disciplinary measures and, and uh, even those who have been given um, the uh, actual payments uh, so that they should not be brought back uh, into the employ uh, of SAA when it's revived um, one way or the other. A, a belief which is there that you can't throw out a, a company which was founded uh, on the basis uh, of the state seeking to um, balance uh, the flow of transportation uh, as a, a public uh, uh, intervention uh, in as far as effectiveness and looking into um, how the entirety uh, of society interact uh, effectively, uh, making use uh, of available uh, means of transport and, and, and the state being involved uh, in such encouragement. Uh, thanks, thank you very much, Chair. <clears throat> All right, thank you, Honorable Samuel. Honorable Hart, David. Yeah, no, no, thanks, um, Honorable Chair. Hey, in, in the report uh, paints a very devastating state of affairs, a rotten business. Chair, what's more disturbing is that SAA is a national flag carrier. And 
listening to this and the impact it will have on the lives of the poor because of the greedy individual and uh, service provider. It's very devastating, Chair. But I'm interested, Chair, in, in, in knowing uh, this service provider, when cases of fraud and corruption are uncovered, they are quickly uh, uh, willing to repay the money, whether or not after they have done so, is that the end of the case? Does it become business as usual for them? They continue to look around for another cash cow that they're going to milk. Are we not sending a very strong and unequivocal message to those uh, who are found guilty? Or are we satisfied uh, uh, with the fact that after they have, we have um, uncovered the, the corruption, as led by the SIU, uh, we are willing to, to settle with them and then they pay the money. Because I don't want a, a, a situation or a picture that will be painted that when it comes to crime, fraud and corruption, it is only suitable for the rich and wealthy. They will be able to buy their way out and nothing will happen after they have repaid the money. Uh, I'm, I'm sure uh, uh, that's not the intent or the intention of all this investigation because we need to send a very strong message and for anyone who might harbor the intentions of uh, uh, going into or venture into crime and corruption, that person might, might think twice. Otherwise, if we're going to let the situation where a person would just repay the money, yeah, that person can continue, even if it means we, we, we prohibit them from doing business with the state anymore, even though they have paid the money, uh, that will send a clear message. So I, I would like to get that understanding, Chair, uh, from the SIU in terms of their findings, whether or not it only goes as far as paying back the money. Thank you. Chairman Dikabir. Chairperson. Too late, Sambuyala. Hey, I think it's had a break. Hey, okay, can, can I can I uh, then uh, and I send Tete and on, on his behalf, can I then uh, <clears throat> assist I think uh, who's so. our next speaker? Please proceed, honorable Somio. Who is our so, next speaker? So, okay, my, 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 finished, network was, I, my network was I, giving me a problem. Uh, so I'm fine now, Chair. I, I think so I'm back, but just want to stand by to assist. Uh, okay. Who was next in the group? No, I think this was the, last, it was the last speaker. So can we hand yes. over to... No, Chair. Oh, no, Chair. All right, Mam, I should be the last one. Malbongwe. Kamala thank you Mabu. very much. Malbongwe. Ah, thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson. Honorable Chairperson, once again, I really want to, to, to congratulate the SIU with the kind of work that they are doing and the knowledge of the space chair, I am really impressed. I really want to, to say it again, that they are our last hope uh, because South Africa has been very, very notorious, especially our government, insofar as corruption is concerned. They are really now the last line in defending our poor people in the looting that has been taking place. In them. Yes, chair. My, my, my take here is whether it is possible to, to, to work with the business rescue plan people uh, as advocate Mutibi is reporting to say, there's a lot of competition in that space. And mine is, my take is 
the government is also responsible for these business rescue plans. Isn't there any way where we can they can plan together such that the SIU is not being take, uh, overtaken by events? For instance, like Honorable Lise was saying, there's going to be a process of paying people their money whilst there are investigations that are taking place. Uh, how can we really make sure that for all those that might be expected to pay back, working together with the SIU and the business rescue plan, how can they find a middle ground so that we don't have that honorable police was raising to be a very, very serious fear that people might move away and we might not be able to get that money in years time or so because they'll make it a point that we don't get it back anyway. So is there a way that we can we can work together such that you, you the SIU is not being really uh, left behind insofar as recouping of the monies that were looted by the looters chair? I think we are very consistent to say they must do their work as they are doing. And if we can, I heard them saying the, the some investigation in the earlier uh, SOEs that we're dealing with, they said by June they were concluded those. I did not hear them on what they anticipate insofar as the SAA is concerned. Can we also get that chair? Because for where we are, the sooner they conclude, the better so that everybody can see that, in fact, we're doing something about corruption, especially for those who have been mentioned. The investigation is finding out that indeed they are on the wrong. So that's my take, Chair, just to be made very clear whether there can be no way of working together. I know they have different interests, but this is one government that wants to deal with corruption. So there shouldn't be any competition. Instead, there should be a way of working together. Uh, forgive me if I am talking from ignorance, Chairperson. Thank you very much. No, no ignorance uh, at all, actually. I think your question is quite substantive and I want to build on it. Um, but I should say maybe the SIU, uh, the HOU will give uh, uh, an indication here. Just on what honorable list <clears throat> and what Mamdullah should have raised, excuse me. And to say maybe an approach similar to that on the PPE investigations to have the reports released in tranches or phases so that um, we don't wait for a full uh, you know, a report in 2022. Uh, because also you see the, the challenge is that we are chasing a moving target of a business that is uh, in the hands of business rescue practitioners, uh, which may, you know, take a different form, a different shape, uh, as things are still not very clear now in terms of its direction. Um, and so these things must not be lost in the cracks. It's, I think that's the dilemma that um, we're investigating an entity uh, which is uh, morphing in, in one way or the other, uh, and also being rescued on the, the, the other hand. So it, it's a set of comple complexities that are unprecedented, really. Uh, and, and so I think Mamdulashe and what Wablis uh, uh, are, are raising is, is fundamental uh, to ensure that this is not an exercise in futility, but one that must actually um, you know, derive the necessary results uh, out of it for for, for it to be meaningful. So maybe a HOU, something along the lines of the similar model, but you will let us know of your modalities, uh, whether today or whether you'll rework them out uh, so that we can calibrate uh, our approaches with an oversight consistent to how you'll be structuring uh, all, the, all, all these things. Just one question on my side, I think um, the in so far as the Denel and uh, SA investigations are concerned, how much is all of this costing you uh, to do, uh, and or how much have you budgeted for it, and whether you've got the resources um, necessary and required to actually um, pursue this mammoth task? <clears throat> right, um, honourable colleagues, I think that was the last question from Mam Dolasha. Um, 
can I then get a response? Can you get responses then from the um, SIU, HOU, and your team over to you? Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair. We appreciate the questions. Um, just in terms of the approach, Chair, if I were to start there uh, on, 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 on releasing interim reports, I think that's especially in an environment where we are now, we should immediately adopt that, that approach. Uh, that approach can be, up, can be adopted in any investigation. There are no limitations. Um, is it, it's not only applicable to, to COVID-19 investigations. So, so that's as, a, as, as, a, as, as an approach, especially in the circumstances, we should do that. Um, that's also going to help us uh, to align. And I really want to agree with the fact that this should not be uh, an exercise in futility. Uh, we would like to see it producing the results that we, that we had uh, set ourselves out to, to produce. Uh, so in line with that, Honorable Chair and Honorable Tolashe, what we will do, although we've of course been liaising with the business, business rescue practitioners, uh, and also in line with what Honorable Lee is saying around uh, those employees who might leave and they would possibly have been part of the wrongdoing. So what we should do, and we will do that, is that uh, yes, indeed, we've got you know, uh, some names where evidence have pointed. And in that case, we should immediately, we should immediately indicate to the business practitioners and to the board in the sense that we should know what is it that each individual has done uh, and uh, what is it that uh, we are likely to produce. Because uh, in the same way as we do with those employees who resign uh, in the face of wrongdoing and we approach the courts to, to freeze the pensions. Uh, I do not think that there is any legal impediment that says anyone who is about to be paid a severance package, uh, we cannot seek uh, legal intervention uh, to ensure that we hold that in the interest of ensuring that when we come to recover, uh, we should be able to recover. We will explore that uh, with, with immediate effect. Uh, my colleague, uh, the lead investigators and my colleague in the legal space, uh, we need to immediately do that and uh, we'll include it in the, in the reports, uh, honorable chair and honorable members. Um, uh, Honorable Lees, I want, uh, I'll leave this to my colleague, uh, uh, Mrs. Tasibe, if, if you do have the information, if not, then we can possibly respond to the committee in writing. Uh, this issue around the Airbus swap, where the former chairperson was involved, or allegedly uh, was involved. Uh, if, if you do have information on that, uh, please, uh, uh, appraise the, the, the honorable committee. But as I say, if we don't have it on hand, uh, then we can respond uh, in writing to the committee. Uh, honorable Dex, I cannot agree with you more. I agree with you 100% that uh, the observation really is, is that uh, I think there were, there were indicators long time ago. Uh, I mean, as in the years that you're referring, 2001. Um, yeah, the, the unfortunate part is that perhaps those indicators uh, were not responded to a, a, a appropriately or accordingly. Uh, so, so as a result, we're having to now dive deep and investigate uh, as we are doing now. Uh, the, timeline for, the timeline for our investigation uh, uh, does not really extend back to 2001. Um, uh, we can really indicate that 
Mr. Sibe, if you do have the timelines uh, that, that our investigation covers. Um, again, uh, Honorable Dex, uh, with regard to the former chairperson, what, what we do and we will do as we do in other uh, SOE investigations, in all of these wrongdoings, the investigators have a clear, clear directive that we should determine which board was in place at a certain period when the wrongdoings identified occurred and what was the role of the board at the time. And if at any point in time, the board that was chaired by the former chairperson uh, is identified to have been recalcitrant, uh, we will make sure that uh, they are also held accountable. Uh, Honorable Somio, uh, Mackenzie settlement, I think I would also touch on what Honorable Hadebe has said. Uh, it is indeed so that we have to guard against sort of sending a, a wrong message that when companies are faced with wrongdoing, evidence of fraud and corruption, that they easily you know, uh, come out and offer to settle. So the approach that we adopt in those instances, similar to what we did at ESCOM when ABB settled for 1.5 billion, the, the underlying message and the underlying uh, or, or the qualification to the settlement agreement is that if there is any evidence, of course, of course, the a settlement agreement can we cannot uh, uh, agree that anybody is held uh, uh, not to account uh, when there is criminal evidence. So the underlying qualification is when there's evidence of criminality, that company will be prosecuted. Uh, so if they don't like that, then they better not settle. But we will continue then with the civil litigation and, and get to the same results. Because the settlement just helps. And, 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 and honorable chair and honorable members, the, the settlement, like my colleague, uh, Mr. Sibe said, uh, the, 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 the negotiations are still going on. There was an issue around the payment of the, of, of the capital amount, but there's also this issue around interest that they seemingly wanted to avoid or, 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 or escape from. And we are saying to SAA and to this uh, company McKinsey that no, you know, you, if, you, if you settle, you've got to settle the whole amount, including, including interest. That will be in the interest of SAA. Uh, so, so when we do these settlements, we ensure that uh, they are in the interest of, uh, of SAA. Uh, but as I say, the qualification to that is that if there's evidence pointing to criminal action, the company and its directors will be prosecuted. Uh, they should not agreeably, I agree, honorable, However, they should not buy their way out. We should not send out that message. Uh, Honorable Tolashe, we take the message to heart uh, and we will, of course, do our best uh, that we do our investigations uh, as effectively as possible so that we sustain that hope and, in fact, realize it uh, in the sense of ensuring that our investigations you know, bring out the anticipated results, hold those who are responsible to account, and the result must be tangible and demonstrable. So in this, in this environment of SAA, I think speed is of the essence. Uh, time is of the essence at the moment. Uh, we have to go and meet with the uh, business rescue practitioners and the board to determine that all of those who have been pointed out uh, do not get away uh, uh, with their severance packages uh, without, without being held uh, to account. Uh, Chair, I would like to pause here. Uh, oh yeah, in terms of cost of the investigation, uh, 
Mr. Sibe or, or, or my colleague, uh, Mr. Lefeto, uh, if you have the project plan or, that, that, or, or the, um, uh, what we call the letter of engagement, honorable chair and honorable members, the letter of engagement is what we enter into and sign up with the state institution and that letter indicates the resources that we need and the costs of the investigation. Uh, so uh, my colleagues, uh, Mr. Lakhato and Mr. Sibe, if you have, uh, please indicate to the honorable chair and honorable members. If not, then, then uh, we should be able to respond quite quickly uh, in writing back to the committee. Uh, Mr. Sibe, are you able to uh, just indicate on uh, Honorable Lise's question around uh, the Airbus shop? Uh, is, it, is it in the scope of the investigation? Thank you, Honorable Chair. I'll just allow Mr. Sibe to come in. Thank you, HOU, and thank you, Chairperson. Um, let me start with the, the period uh, of our proclamation. Our proclamation period is from the 1st of January 2002 to 31st January 2020. That's uh, in essence almost um, 18 years chairperson that we are looking at in terms of SAA. And then uh, let me also attend to the issue of budget. Um, We've, uh, we've signed a letter of engagement with both Danel and SAA. Uh, for Danel, the investigation, we anticipated that it will cost us 10 million rand, and we have not yet um, uh, 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 finished that budget. We're still in, in, in line with our budget. And then SAA, considering the time, um, the period of our investigation that our investigation is covering, we budgeted for 30.5 million rand um, in, in respect of um, SAA. This is just a budget. We may, uh, or we may exceed or we may just short for it, uh, 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 fall short of, of, of this amount. And then, um, and then the, the around uh, the question, uh, 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 I think it was, when are we finishing? Chairperson, I think will welcome the suggestion that we, 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 we approach as, as the HO, as the head has already indicated. We, we've got matters that will be finishing uh, in due course. Uh, those matters, I think, I think then it, we will be ready to, to report on them as and when we finish. And then on the issue of the Airbus SOP, um, Chairperson, I would like to report that, you know, our, our, our investigation into SAA is too broad. It's similar to the investigation uh, uh, into ESCOM. It's very wide. Uh, in terms of the Airbuses and, and Airbus contracts and, and, and all, 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 all processes relating to aircrafts, we are looking, we are reviewing 79 contracts in total. And then uh, because it's, 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 it's 44, contracts with individual companies, but you know the, the number of aircrafts that we are reviewing is 79. And, and that, 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 that excludes the, um, the contracts, the specific contracts for maintenance and repairs for all the aircrafts that we are currently reviewing. So our investigation is very broad in terms of SAA. So the, the, to be specific to the question, we are uh, investigating the, 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 the swap deal. So nothing uh, that is in that space will not be covered, uh, Chairperson. Hence my introduction to, uh, to uh, I started with giving a background on the sale and lease back um, of, of these aircrafts. And also we are looking into now expanding our scope into everything that dealt with the, the, the aircrafts. Um, the issue around identifying the looters, we have already identified a number of employees chair as per my report uh, that were involved in some of these contracts. And we have, um, uh, uh, we've got a list of those. And what we will do then uh, based on the guidance that was given, we will be able to now start engaging with SAA and the, and the, and the, and the, 
and the business rescue practitioners around that uh, so that at least they know that we might have to apply for the freezing of those pensions. Um, and then uh, this, the 200, the sale and lease back, uh, the 200 million that was paid and authorized by National Treasury. That's why we started with the, the whole process, uh, what led to the decision to sell all the, the, the fleet of SAA and start leasing back. So we are reviewing that process and we are going to um, uh, get a report uh, on that. Uh, we cannot therefore at this stage say that uh, somebody is responsible. I know that you mentioned the chairperson, but what we have um, uh, established at the moment is that the board at all material times was divided in a number of issues. So we have requested um, uh, the, the personal files. We are in the process now of interviewing all the board members that were involved in some of these decisions, because um, uh, based on the BHC documents, as well as then the recordings that we have, that we managed to, 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 to get, um, they were not uh, in agreement in all the issues. And then, then we want to follow that up. And then um, if we find some to be liable, then we will follow that process, Chair. And then with regards to the McKenzie contract, Yes, there is that 600 million that is linked to that contract, but because that, that matter is already with AFU, we also brought AFU on board uh, at one stage with this, with this segment negotiation. And it, the feeling was that maybe we should allow the law to take its course in terms of that. What we have um, done, that's why the SIU is involved in that segment agreement. We have advised uh, SAA and we are all in agreement that there is no way that the settlement agreement will exonerate them from any criminal liability and, and from any future um, uh, civil liability. So in, 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 in essence, they are just, they wanting to pay the, 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 the 10.5 million excluding that. Uh, that, is, that is not clearing them from any, from any future liability. If that that includes the, the the criminal liability if we find find any um, uh, 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 criminality against them. Hence, in my presentation, Chairperson, uh, I indicated that we are still investigating even the payments to McKenzie. That ten, what led to that payment because it was linked to the performance. So if it was linked to their performance, then you might find that one member was not honest in, in, in approving set, certain payments. So we are looking into that. So that investigation is not yet finalized. So we've agreed, we've taken a conscious stand that the SIU will not be part of that segment agreement. Even though we've assisted SAA, we are not going to be part of the signing of that agreement because we would like to remain independent in the process and um, having advised SAA not to um, exonerate McKenzie from any wrongdoing. So we are not going to be party to the agreement. Um, Yes, uh, it is possible to work with the, 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 the business, business rescue practitioners uh, around some of these uh, instances and, and also uh, identify the, the liable um, uh, officials. I think that that's, that's about it, Chairperson. I'm not sure whether I'm leaving anything. Thank you. Hi. Right, colleagues, I think, uh, all right, Honorable Dex, I saw your hand is up, a brief one, and then we will bring yeah. it to a close. Yeah, just very brief. Yeah, just very briefly, Chair. Chair, yeah, I'm very happy that uh, uh, period covers uh, from two, 2002, because that's a critical period. So I'm very uh, grateful for that. Uh, however, I must say the task will be very daunting, and I do not know if the SIE will have the resources uh, because there's so many other investigations and other SO, SOEs, and uh, this one in SAA will be daunting in, it, in, 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 in itself. So I'm very, very glad that this from 2002 was it will cover the time where the CEO, the then CEO, sold our, our, our fleet to a company uh, overseas where he had an interest, financial interest in, where he was a director of 
and then we still gave him a, a golden handshake. So they'll deal with those issues. So I'm uh, grateful for that. But then just lastly, I just need to clarify the point because uh, the presenter now just raised it again that uh, Honorable Dirk asked what happened to, to, to Mjani. I don't want the media to, uh, to uh, misquote me. I did not ask that question because I want anybody to, to, go, say, to go after Mjani and say, well, what about to, to Mjani? What about but you know, no, that's not the reason why I asked the question. I asked the question because of what the media have done. Because the media, when you speak about SAA and corruption SAA, everybody in this country will tell you to me any uh, the corruption at, 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 uh, at SAA. That narrative was created by the by the by the by by, by the media. Now I'll I do not. I'm not a supporter of that kind of that kind of narrative. But the narrative was out, out out there. And then when we get reports that officials, this official, that official, that's been wrong, wrong. So I was just asking uh, the issue about Mutu Mjeni. I'm not saying that she's guilty. I'm not saying that she's been involved in 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 in, in, in corruption. I uh, raise it because of the narrative that has been created by the media out, 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 out there. But there's no way that I'm uh, uh, suggesting that we. Our focus must be to to many. I'm going must go to to many. No, no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just asking it because of the the narrative out out there. Uh, thank you, Jay. No, I think uh, you have explained yourself sufficiently on that one, and I think uh, it suffices uh, for yourself. Thank <laughs> you. Let me take this opportunity to thank the head of unit of the SIU. TV. Why explain? <laughs> and Mam uh, Kresibe and the rest of the team. Uh, as always, we appreciate the cooperation of the SIU uh, in the work that we do. And uh, I, I'm, I'm hopeful that HOU, you will be able to uh, consider more practically within uh, the schedule of work that you have, the issue of the interim reports uh, is sharply raised by Mamdulashe and Babulis uh, as a safeguard mechanism uh, to to make sure that uh, we, we we derive maximum uh, output <clears throat> in terms of the investigation. So, colleagues, as you can see, there's a lot of work that the SIU has on their hands. This just these two investigations into SAA and Denel will cost about 40 million rands. And that is the tragedy of corruption, that it costs money to recover money, to go after money, to uh, go after people. Money that could be spent on improving the collective sustainable livelihoods of our people. And so it's a vicious cycle, uh, which we need to nip in the bud in one way or the other. And so as Mam Dilasha said, uh, investigations such as these become our last hope and so we hope that they will be done correctly and that they will yield the necessary results. So HOU and your team, um, it, you've of course painted the picture as it is, as bleak as it is, uh, you know, as, as I was saying, the state capture then the state collapse. I mean, Denel and SAA were flagships uh, in their respective sectors and spaces. Today, they are shadows of their former selves. And um, it's, 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 a, it's, it's just, it's heartbreaking uh, to, 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 to see them breaking like this and broken like this. So thank you very much uh, for that. Colleagues, just one announcement. Um, I will not, I will certainly not be mean and keep up here any longer. Uh, I did have a discussion with uh, the legal advisor assigned to our committee. Uh, and I can only just conclude to say we can proceed uh, with the inquiry as we discussed this morning um, along the lines that we have discussed. Uh, I think what we will do is just send a briefing note to members uh, and find an opportunity maybe next week, uh, Tuesday or Wednesday, for about 30 minutes for the legal advisor to just come and talk to us uh, on the basis of the briefing note that we had. But uh, from their side, uh, we've got a green light, uh, including but not limited to meeting and calling Mr. Uh, Chitangano, the suspended CPO of ESCOM, 
and of course uh, merging really the the work of uh, the deviations and expansions to the litany of allegations that are there. So those two can run together uh, and can be worked on together. Uh, and what we will be doing is if there's a need for additional resources uh, for the committee, <clears throat> when we worked out the modalities of this exercise, we will make an application to the presiding officers uh, of parliament. But I think it forms part and parcel of our normal work. Uh, it's just that we must deal with it speedily so that we can uh, restore a semblance of stability uh, at ESCOM and move past these issues, uh, which which really must uh, not derail us from the 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 the, the, the broader mission uh, of, of an effective and functional ESCOM and as, as members express themselves. But be that as it may, uh, this investigation. I'm fundamentally convinced will go a long way in, in assisting us to uh, fix things at ESCOM, it may unearth uh, other things. So I think colleagues, what we'll do, because really we time, it's been a long day. Uh, we will send a briefing note tomorrow and then have the uh, legal advisor, Sichome Putpen, either Tuesday morning or Wednesday morning uh, uh, for about 30 minutes, just to speak to the members and then on the basis of that briefing note, uh, they, they can already start drafting uh, on it so that we can just uh, move with this. So colleagues, all, all in all, the green light uh, in terms of uh, advice has been given and it should be all systems go uh, once we have adopted the modus operandi and the framework of the investigation. So I hope, can we leave it at that and to say that legal Parliament Legal is now aware of this and we are working with them. Uh, on this matter, given the complexities which uh, characterize it. Uh, colleagues, may we leave it at that? That's fine. Yes, Chair, we are ready going for this form. We are ready. Going yes. once, going yeah. twice, going thrice, fine, going to... Is it uh, Chair, good, 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 let's, let's, yeah. appreciate that. let's appreciate that we have uh, two women who are presenting these reports. Um, uh, for the previous period, it has been uh, our advocate. Now has got uh, two women. Uh, Come, this is a right. wonderful job. Yeah. We must really just say appreciate that. Uh, Thank wonderful. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. No, no, sir. Uh, Babu, Babu Mtib, we may be calling on you to assist us with the investigation. So just keep an ear out, depending what it births. We're dealing okay. with an ESCOM matter which will require us to move with agency. Colleagues, going we'll once, going twice. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Colleagues, thank you. Good night. We will see good you night. next week. Okay. Thank you very much. Bye. Long live the chair. Long live thank the you. chair. We are born. We are born. I receive. I receive. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> good night. Inspired <laughs> ones.